I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. Um, we, we are currently only with three members here and so we're waiting um, a few minutes to start our public hearing. I see that we have the um, applicant, his engineer, our engineer, and the butter who's here for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, the public hearing for proposed site plan number SP3-18 located, located at 340 Oak Street. Dan, come on in and join us. Have you been sworn in? I have, yes. All right, then come sit down and make us a quorum. Sorry, I'm going to say Thank you, So we have our, our newest member, Dan Smith, joining us after his election on Saturday. Yep. Right there, you have your name put in front of you already. Okay. So with that, we can open our public hearing. For proposed site plan number SP3-18 located at 340 Oak Street to construct new parking areas and make improvements to the stormwater drainage system at existing indoor sports facility, the Wolves Den Sports Complex. So I see that we all have um, a sheet in front of us from Maryland Associates with an outline of the plan and I'll turn it over to the applicant first to introduce us to the plan and then we'll have um, a chance for the board members to ask questions to hear from our engineer and then a chance for our butters to let us know any um, opinions or concerns they might have. Okay, thank you Madam Chairman. Peter Palmieri from Merrill Engineers and Lance Arez with me this evening is uh, Mr. John Coria, who is the applicant's representative for this project. Um, I think everybody knows where the site is located, but just um, for a frame of reference, the site is located on the southerly side of Oak Street, which is shown in this area. It's about 600 feet south of the intersection of Oak and Church Street. Um, as far as the uh, butters, we have Stop and Shop, which this is the Stop and Shop building, which is part of our case centers. Um, we have the existing detention basin for Corporate Park Drive, and this parcel here um, was recently um, in front of the board for application for a medical building at number 15, Corporate Park Drive. Behind the property is um, property owned by uh, Mr. Bill Murphy. Um, I forget the specific entity, but um, he is the property owner. Um, our parcel consists of about 8.5 acres. It's located in the Industrial A and marijuana, Medical Marijuana Overlay District. There is an existing large building located here. It consists of about 52,000 square feet, which is about 14% of the entire property. Um, currently, there is a small paved parking area in this location. The driveway is located here. This area was recently cleared and some reclaimed asphalt was placed for temporary parking. Um, the, um, currently, or recently I should say, there's been some pre-clearing right in this location for our proposed septic system repair. Um, all the trees have been taken down, the septic system repair plan has been approved by the Board of Health. Um, the project, as was stated in the, um, the advertisement, basically consists of the um, construction of a larger paved parking area as shown in this area with the state associated stormwater controls and treatment um, methods. We have a treatment system located in this area of the site adjacent to Oak Street. 
and a second detention basin located here towards the rear of the building. The access drive is going to be relocated from here about 100 feet in the westerly direction. We're providing about a 36 foot wide um, entrance. That's a, to allow for one uh, aisle to enter the property and two aisles to exit. One aisle will be for right hand turns, the second aisle will be for left hand turns. The site distances in this location are very good. Both of them exceed 500 feet, um, and um, so consequently we believe the site distances are not a, an issue. Again, the stormwater for the front portion of the site, which is this paved area, this part of the pavement, will be directed to this stormwater basin, and this is going to be designed as low-impact development, using low-impact development techniques. It'll sheet flow over the parking area, enter grass swales here and here, flow over land over a vegetated filter strip and into a somewhat shallow basin. The basin bottom at this uh, location is 88 and with the um, elevation of the berm is 90 so it's about four feet. We have an outlet control structure here. We'll discharge into an existing rock swale and go into the abutters property. Um, the second basin will take all of the roof runoff and a portion of the pavement from here back and discharge into the stormwater basin here, which will then overflow into an existing drainage ditch, which discharges to the back of the property. Both of these um, basins have been designed to significantly attenuate the post-development flows. Uh, in addition to that, they will provide uh, total suspended solids removal. This system will provide 86%. This system will provide um, about 72%. Since it's a redevelopment project, we don't have to meet the 80%. However, the weighted uh, TSS removal for this system, which basically takes into consideration the roof and the pavement, roof being considered somewhat clean, we do believe actually will be over uh, 80% total suspended solids removal. Um, we ha have asked for four waivers. Um, the first one was to allow, um, actually I should say a waiver of the landscaping plan prepared by a landscape architect. We are showing some landscaping along the front of the property. Um, in Tyler's review letter, he actually suggested some additional landscaping here, here, and along in here along the entrance driveway, which is this area here, um, which we actually think was, is a good idea and we agree to do that. The second waiver we requested was for a traffic impact study. The third waiver was to allow the use of um, Cape Cod broom along the edge of the pavement here and all the way in through here. There is no um, berm or edging here and here because again that's relying on overland flow. We are proposing cement concrete curb at the entrance radii. Um, and then the fourth is a waiver request for the requirement for a development impact statement. Um, we did um, receive Tyler Nims who is the review engineer for this project, his comments today. Um, we really didn't have a chance to prepare a response or revise plans, of course. Um, we do believe we can address all of Tyler's comments. Um, Tyler did say he thought that the uh, waiver for the traffic study uh, and the development impact statement actually made sense based on the uh, proposed project. Um, I'll be happy to address any comments or questions the board has. Questions or comments? Um, the RK Centers, did you, did you see the RK Centers letter that came to us? Yes, I did. Yeah. And they did. They received a copy of the plans and, and the drainage counts and everything. So. Okay, there's a couple things that they put in there that they were asking us to address. Um, do any of those seem like a problem for you guys? Um, no, I think that what, what um, Dave was referring to when this was initially cleared, apparently um, there was a there was an overflow of runoff onto Oak Street, which it made its way down into here. And actually, this flared end section is one of the areas he was talking about. Um, I've been down there, and, and I certainly don't doubt his word. I just haven't looked in the system yet. So, um, if there's some accumulation of debris, um, as long as it's associated with this, I think the applicant would be willing to do that. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, the other area was along this uh, swale, which is actually on the applicant's property. 
Um, I'm not sure why sediment debris got in here, or if it did, or if it's just an overgrown plant. So I haven't really looked at this. When I went out initially, after when this was reported, and I went out to take a look at it, I really didn't see a lot of sediment in here, and I'm not really questioning his comment. Um, I'd be happy to talk to him directly. I just didn't have a chance to do it before the hearing. Okay. And how are we in terms of parking spaces? Well, that, we have a lot more than we did, but um, I think the this parking table, which there were a couple of mathematical mistakes on it on the site plan. I, I took, Tyler pointed that out, and I could see his confusion, but um, we used the zoning bylaw, and based and in, in addition to that information from John Poirier, who runs the uh, baseball and the basketball operation there, there were a couple of items in the zoning bylaw which were pretty clear cut. For example, retail space, office space, and snack bar. The two areas which we didn't really couldn't find anything in the zoning bylaw. There isn't a lot of information on, but we we did style land and Hanover. Mm -hmm. uh, we used some of that information. And then again, John's um, John's input. We came up that we were going to need about 153 spaces, and the site, as proposed, is 166 spaces. Um, part of that is um, six uh, handicap uh, spaces, four in this area, and two in this area. And we, we we tried to provide more parking here along this driveway, but. Um, because the elevated groundwater is forcing the septic system up, this caused this portion of the parking area to be higher, and consequently as we come back down to this existing grade, we're grading. This is all side slope here, so we really didn't have the room to provide more parking spaces. Can you show me again where the septic is? Yeah, is? right here. Okay. So this, is, this is the... Uh, have you been out there recently? No, but I remember at one point there was some discharge over on yeah. the left there. Right here. Um, what is right that? about in here. Yeah. yeah. And is that part of the septic or is that just... Well, there's actually two, two things that were going on there. The first was um, the septic system was here and it surcharged, so uh, it failed. Okay. The second was actually the roof went off for this half of the roof and this half of the roof, the pitch goes like this. Okay. Come, used to come down into this catch basin, which was, was actually located off the property. Yeah. And it would discharge, and it came down a 10 inch uh, plastic pipe, and that pipe was broken. So uh, that was causing a lot of the uh, runoff, which was surcharging and coming down onto the property, the uh, Bakke centers. Okay. So, so, that so the ponding was, was two things it was drainage, and it was the failed septic system. Okay, so when you're saying a repair to the septic system, it looks like a new septic system. It is. System a, it's called a repair. Okay, That's just because it's an existing facility? Exactly. Okay, it is. Exactly, but system. it's a brand new system, and it's been sized, I forget the numbers, but for the new use, um, again, I, as I said, it, it um, received the approval of the Board of Health, and it's, uh, it, it, it's pretty sophisticated in as much as it's going to provide more storage because during tournaments, um, that's obviously their peak, but it happens only three or four times a year. So we had to we had to create a bigger, basically pump chamber. Okay. So it to kind of flatten out the peak flows. Okay. And how do you expect the traffic flow to, to work during a tournament into that back parking lot and back and around? Uh, you got it's it's good that you've got that two ways in and out. Well, the the idea was to well first of all to keep. Um, to get once people get into the site, they don't get backed up on Tog Street. That was the whole idea okay. of this separate driveway. Yep. Um, as far as coming in uh, for tournaments, there'll be um, attendance to directing traffic. Um, as far as leaving, basically this will be the control. Um, John and I have discussed, and we're thinking the idea would be to put cones here and basically direct everyone in here. So, I mean, there's going to be queuing. Mm -hmm. once the tournament's over and people are leaving. Yep. But the idea is to keep them on site and not affect the traffic on Oak Street. Okay. Is there any one way <clears throat> kind of traffic control there? No. Okay. No. Because um, thinking about getting out. Well, the, 
part of the, uh, the thought process was we're going to allow right and left turns to be a designated left turn lane and a designated right turn lane as you exit. Uh, but as far as a one-way traffic, um, I don't think it would work very well with this. Right. We haven't had any, we've staggered the times, so all the game, first games start at the same time and then the seating games are all 10 minutes apart and we haven't had anything backing up into the parking lot at all. Our biggest issue now is when they go in the park on the side, it's just someone will park at the wrong spot, they'll make up the spot, yeah. so you can't get two cars in at a time. Yeah. So that's the only issue we run into now, and the attendant usually is out there, one of the kids we pay to stand out there. But And obviously everything's going to be marked. Yes. Yeah. 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 All the spaces will be lined up. This one might be nice, entrance only. Keeps the owner that cross traffic. Uh, well, that's a thought. Um, again, that was one of the reasons I was thinking that maybe um, at the end of tournaments the um, cones would be set up. But if you were to allow just right turns in, that um, keeps the flow. Down. Yeah, it wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't hurt. Where's that? As you come in, this was the area we were talking yeah. about. So make it a right turn only to go in. Yeah, yeah just to come in here. Traffic situation. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll kind of. Uh, you, Dan, you mean right? All, everybody comes in right? Not everybody, okay. but don't allow exiting. Okay, right? yes, yeah. thought. Yeah. Oh, through that part. Diffuse yeah. the through flow the on the way in. Yeah. <clears throat> Just a quick comment here. Looks like the high point is uh, 97, 98, rather. Yeah, right, right here. Right there. Yeah. <clears throat> Everything else is flowing to the. Uh, Drainage area, uh, base number one. This, this area, right. There's, there's with the no exception of the roof. All of the roof, with the exception of this area, yeah. is coming back. Well, it's actually going this way, through this drain line and out. Okay. Um, this roof is just a massive contributor to the overall. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. But the, I only see one catch basin in the whole system. This, this, catch, this is actually one catch basin. Yeah. The idea is, again, to do the um, that overland country style. Right. To have sheet flow coming down. That's why I'm not having berm here. This will come down, come into the, go over a uh, stone diaphragm, yeah. Yeah. come down this swale, get into this basin. This will do the same thing. Come down this swale, go underneath the roadway, and come into this basin. And we have a 102. At the, in, the, in the lower part and the, the other parking lot. Right? Correct. Right. The 102 the, plus the right here. Half of the pitches to basin one and the other half pitches to basin uh, basin two. Correct. Now, where are your slopes, Pete, along the, uh, the the edge? This here? Yeah, the slopes are like, what are they, three to oh, one? Oh, this, this is three to one. Okay. Yep. We have a two-foot shoulder and then three to one. Okay. <coughs> Um, once, um, as I said, I took a look at Tyler's letter. It'll take me a couple of weeks to um, re make a response and some revisions to the plans. So, um, and any questions I have, I can certainly talk to Tyler. Well, why don't we see if the folks who came in to talk to us tonight have any other comments? I would have uh, if comments. If you oh, Peter, like, how are you? I didn't recognize you. I didn't recognize you. Either. Either. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind just giving us your name. Yeah, my name is Bill Murphy. Uh, okay, so you're the... I'm, the, I'm a media butter okay. on uh, two sides. Just a quick comment. He is the Bill Murphy. As opposed to his son. <laughs> 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 um, a, a, great, uh, a great improvement, to be sure. Uh, a ton of effort and a, a ton of time being put in. Congratulations. I'm glad it's uh, something is finally occurring. Uh, I have a couple of issues, and uh, uh, we're, we're talking about uh, retailing your design. There's no way in heck you can base this parking situation on a on a retail zoning. Uh, you may do it for the planning board, but in, re in reality, you're not going to do it for for uh, the experience of uh, tournaments on the site, and. Uh, uh, we've happened to have had uh, the pleasure of, uh, of dealing with uh, with the uh, apparently the applicants uh, overflow in corporate park having uh, having our own uh, details out in corporate park because our tenants were, were so terribly upset with parking being 
taken up on their in front of their units. Uh, it was a, a nightmare uh, for uh, several weeks last last year. And uh, I'm glad to see something occur. I don't think, however, that you've you've uh, sufficiently uh, handled the parking that is going to be necessary to accommodate be it the four times a year. It's just like Gillette Stadium, four times a year. It's a harrowing experience for the for the neighbors. And uh, we want to try to avoid this as much as possible. I'm not against the project. Um, uh, I, I have a couple of, uh, not being tuned in exactly to what the zoning requirements are, uh, uh, specifically regarding uh, parking layout, uh, but I would, I would uh, suggest that the consideration, maybe the planning board might consider, and the applicant might consider. <laughs> this is a main entrance coming in, and it's something I think Dan mentioned, making it a, I'm, I'm walking somebody's way here, but, um, making this a, uh, a dedicated exit, one-way exit, which is fine. My understanding, am I right, am I right Peter, that this is not going to be paved? No, it will be paved. Everything's going to be paved? Correct. Okay, that's great. Um, I was... Uh, for the four times a year, parking is key. I think you have enough area here for probably about 10 feet and enough area here for another, uh, I guess, uh, probably another eight feet, six feet, whatever. But I was wondering if this could be shifted down to get parking on this one side of the access way, you're going to pick up another uh, 16 or 17 parking spots and, with, uh, and not get into the not get into the severe drop or the elevation issues associated with this, uh, with the uh, drop onto uh, the abutters property. Also, the same thing here. This is markedly elevated to accommodate your septic system and also to accommodate the need for parking. Uh, this whole area couldn't be used for parking, but with the with a, a modest improvement, this is 24 feet. What well, that's a which is probably a standard roadway. Uh, access, but uh, I think that there probably could be some type of provision in here for additional parking with with uh, and not the entire area, but certainly a goodly portion of it. We can get 18 feet more, and maybe uh, take a couple of feet out of this access way uh, just to accommodate. There's another 32 parking spots along there, potentially. And again, we're talking four times a year. <clears throat> and, uh, but that four times a year is going to be a nightmare. I don't think it's adequate. I don't know what the provisions are going to be in the future. If it isn't adequate, they're going to spend a ton of money on this, to be sure, which is all uh, very positive. And it's clearly the applicant has come forward to try to ameliorate the, uh, the, the situation that, uh, that currently exists. But I'm just trying to capture just from what we have here now with a minimal additional cost, additional uh, parking, because Steve Tomasi has to deal with it across the street. I have to deal with it adjacent. I don't want any more details on um, my property just to accommodate um, his business, which he was not certainly willing to pick up, or the applicant wasn't willing to pick up. I had to pay for the details. And uh, I just think this is the one shot to get it, um, to get this done right. And uh, I wouldn't have any objection, if the board wouldn't have any objection, even though taking a portion of this back area out here and just put the uh, we call it the uh, crushed asphalt uh, on it uh, as a as a necessary overflow area, um, and that uh, would potentially solve a lot of problems. Again, four times a year, and I, I uh, and, I'm, and I'm talking about for a modest cost compared to having to put a finished surface on. So I would like to hear the applicant's response to that because my one concern is in addition we had we had. You know, the three concerns on this property, parking is one, mm -hmm. parking and traffic, they kind of go together as one. The other one has been drainage, which has at this point been impacting the stop and shop and the RK Center folks on the other side. And then the third has been, you know, making sure that when the septic gets redone and redesigned, it doesn't fail again, because that was the third, you know, um, issue that happened on this property. So I guess... I hear what you're saying. I don't know that the cost is that great. I just want to make sure it's not going to have a negative impact on things like drainage. Well, um, are you all set, though? No, I'm not, I'm not all set. Okay. Uh, I, uh, you left out one of butter. 
and that is me. I'm on the downside of the drainage. Mm -hmm. And that ditch was put in, well, it was probably 30 some odd years ago. Okay. And um, it, it, and uh, that's right. When I, <coughs> where is it, Peter? Right here. There's the, no, no, the ditch up here. There's a ditch. Oh, this ditch. Here. This ditch. It goes yeah. it's right here. Goes where, where? All the way back. Yeah, it goes. It it it, uh, it comes off the property, and was flooding out my my lot, and uh, 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 I blocked it off many many years ago, probably 25 years ago, okay. and they put a pipe over the embankment down to the bottom, which in turn is at my property, and on uh, you know 10 feet away from my property, and it floods out down below. Now uh, this is the time to. We get to talk about drainage. This is the time to, to probably put some uh, defensive mechanism on that probably around 400 feet long trench. Am I right, Peter? Yeah, that's it's probably it's from here feet. all the way to the back. And yeah, I and think this is 330 to the back property line. Yeah, and this is only got a two and a half. This is only got a. It looks like a very big detention base. And I'm not an engineer. Peter did a great job here on the on the septic system. It's very very involved septic system of design and uh, accommodating the pocketing on top of it is uh, it was a challenge, I'm sure. But I, uh, but it's only got two and a half foot of freeboard before it goes out the outfall, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's that's the way it's designed. Uh, I think it's from ninety to ninety two and a half, and then it flows out. And well, where does it go? It comes to me, and uh, I would like to see something, uh, uh, either a small basin or or even a larger basin. I could KLS further down that swale to allow. The, anything that comes down there to settle out on their property before it comes down into mine. And uh, I'm not talking about doing a, a very extensive job, but certainly it can be done with a with a machine in a day and a, maybe a small a spillway uh, so that it would capture at that location. The siltation would, would, would fall out of it at that particular point, uh, hopefully, and then it would flow further down by its natural course. But give it an opportunity to stay on their property. Because uh, that that swale impacts me further down, down, uh, and and it also affects our is it our K R K R centers on that back side, and it's a septic. They have a septic system on that back side as well. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not so sure. It's, it's not the only septic system, but it's a, it's a septic system for uh, the uh, coal. I think coal store. Uh, yes, yeah, I think some of it goes across the street, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. There is something like drain. Yeah. 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 Oh, second system part of it goes across the street. There is one out the back. Yes. Okay, there's a small one out the back. So it's the, the drainage is a big concern, okay, but I think it could be taken care of. Okay, that's a, that is a small basin. I wouldn't care if the basin were made, <clears throat> the basin were made smaller here and made larger down, further down into the back land. It would solve the same purpose. It would also give an avenue for for for, for potential um, parking field out here in an emergency situation. I don't think that's a big thing to ask, especially in light of the in light of the um, the volume that a successful uh, sports complex will uh, will draw. And um, I mean, we got, we got this does nothing actually for the town, but a headache. It has a headache also for the abutters. I'm just trying to. Uh, eliminate that as much as possible during those uh, four major times of uh, the year. Maybe more. I hope it's, well, if it's 15 times a year that he has a business. I hope it's 20. It doesn't make any difference to me as long as he's able to accommodate his own needs on his own site. And he has the area to do that. And I'm just saying a, um, a small modification here brought out back may just give the opportunity to extend this further out back for, a, for emergency or, uh, or a, a extended parking. And um, and that would alleviate any problem for <coughs> for the neighbors. I don't think it'll alleviate all of them because I've been in sports centers and I know uh, they can draw a, an incredible crowd. And I hope he does because that's what he's in business for. Okay, but I just want to make the say I should make the uh, make to make the provisions so that it doesn't bother the abutters. And Steve Tomasi does business on Saturday. He does business on Saturday. Steve doesn't want to lose his customers because the cars are parked up all the way up the street and nobody can get up there. <coughs> yeah. Okay, and it's just a little bit of common sense at this particular point. You know, it's not, um, and that's, uh, and those two issues are the two that I'm kind of concerned about. Uh, uh, Stephen Tomasi, Stephen Tomasi. Just second, right. has a okay. question. Okay. Quick question. Uh, Bill makes a good point about additional parking. How many, how many parking spaces 
would you require on a, at, a, at an event? Well, that, that's a, is a, when I started my presentation, that's what I was saying was, was from my perspective, the difficult part. And Bill, when I was talking retail, I was just talking, they have a retail store in there. We allocated X number of parking spaces to the retail store based on the square footage to follow the zoning bylaw. Then on top of that, we added a snack, snack bar and office space. But the tough part is, the, 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 for basically the tournaments, how many do you at, uh, allocate for the basketball? Basically, basically the basketball courts. And we came up with a number of 120. Now, I wasn't around, and I have no idea, and maybe we can talk to you after the meeting or something to get a better idea of how many cars were there. John, John yeah, 120 on the street, Peter. Okay. I mean, well, not talking about the parking lot. So that, was, that was last year, I believe. I, I put this temporary parking in, in here, and I caught a lot of heat for doing that, just to try to alleviate any overflow onto your property last year, because I know that it was an issue. So I put this in as a temporary, and now and then I used to rent the Zeski spot across the street also to make sure we didn't have any overflow uh, off the street all your property. We have the signs on the door that if they park over there corporate park they will be towed. No, I understand I understand that. That, was the, that, was the, yeah. that was the issue and, and uh, you're only get you're only getting started then and and I understand. If this is successful, that if you if you put a deck on that you wouldn't have enough parking spaces. And my my point is make that provision as inexpensively as possible out and back so that uh, the, the town, the abutters, uh, are not going to be inconvenienced. And the people in the town, the people in the town have a tough time getting up the street. And you have to have a detail out there. I, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to fix at this particular point. Uh, uh, later, it's going to be harder. And, that's, and we're not that's increasing right. the capacity inside. I mean, I'm more, I'm more parking the better for me. Yeah, um, but I don't, I'd, I'd like to see you go through the. Uh, well, if I could okay, just, guys, yeah, just interject just for a second, second. Yeah, we didn't, uh, because yeah. this relates to the parking. If you don't yeah, we didn't. Too, yeah. Um, we can't provide any more parking spaces here because of the grade difference over the septic system versus here. This is this drops from elevation 102 to one to 90, 99 over a course of like eight feet. I know that it's about three about a three. Uh, it's a three foot uh, drop there, Peter. And I understand that, but you can buy interlocking blocks that are so high and you can put it across there in a heartbeat if you really wanted to and, I, and again we're talking about an emergency if you want to uh, but it might solve a problem of another that's another that's another 32 parking spots right there if you well, and well, I'm not the length. I mean I, I can tell you I tried to squeeze as many parking spaces as and I'm sure you as did I and, I, and I know what you but and I, I just think that's wrong you're up against the building mm -hmm. the, the same thing over here I mean the more parking spaces for example, if I was able to get those on here, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. So, I mean, I totally get that parking is a is a um, concern. I guess what I have to do, or what we have to do, is see if we can come up with a, a number that is. I mean, if, if you, if I'm hearing what you're telling me, um, that uh, is it, Mr. Tomasi. Yes. And Mr. Tomasi, is this the real? Five minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what I was. I'm I just sorry. wanted to make sure. I'm sorry. sorry. This is funny. funny. <laughs> 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 You're on your own. Anyway, uh, some folks get a, 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 you know, the parking was difficult. It's difficult because it's unique. I mean, it's a different use. Um, they don't. It's not in most of the textbooks. It's not in the ITE manual, which is that manual that you, you guys hear so much about, mm -hmm. as far as generating trips. It's not in there. Can I interject? The well, they have to go through the chairman. I'm sorry. Okay. Wait a minute. So, so my one question though was um, the the width of the roadways. That's also for fire requirements, right? Well, it's it's a requirement of the plan. Was 24 foot drivers. Okay. Um, but that's for safety, safety issues, right? How safety. many how many spaces are on the lot today for a tournament? Three. Uh, 90? Yeah. yeah. I mean, since we, did, yeah, since we did the temporary, there hasn't been any parking issues at all this year and last fall. I haven't had a rent this parking lot once. We've never had a parking issue. Um, we're not increasing anything inside so you're at all. Adding, you're adding a net 70, right? Okay. Give or take, yeah. yeah. I mean, all right, so we're adding about 70 spaces. All right, Mr. Tomasi. Stephen Tomasi, AJ Tomasi, just a couple of points here. First of all, I want to say that uh, John has been uh, extremely cordial to me 
during the whole process. When they had an issue with the uh, parking on Oak Street, I know the Pembroke Police got involved, but he was out there. But can't park here, can't park here. Now with the no parking situation, it's been alleviated, I think. Uh, but anyway, just a couple of uh, points here. Um, and I think Bill made a good point here. If, if it's possible to pick up the grade change here, maybe some monument block, not necessarily 90 degree, but how about parallel parking? Eight feet of pavement? If you've got a three foot grade change over that, what is that, 20 feet maybe? What are that gradient is there? Uh, it's, about eight, it's about 10 feet. Okay. Actually, I think it's nine. That's three nine foot change is great. Well, these are, this is, like, these this are 18, is, these are about 60 in there. Okay. Well, I mean, is it possible to pick up some parallel parking? I don't know. If you were able to pick up that, divide that by 20, you'd maybe get another 15 spaces. Whatever. What about using maybe a grass creek type material to get from A to B and have employee parking or overflow parking back here on a non permeable material so that you're not affecting drainage, but you are having, I mean, you, you tell me, John, how many people do you need for employee parking currently? If they're taking up 20 of the spaces, that's 20 less people that yeah. give you money on the turn. Yeah. So, you know. I know on you know, my busy weekends, I ask my employees not to park in my pocket lot. Yeah. You know, take a bus. Come over there. <laughs> you know, I park over the corporate park. Park over the That's just, I mean, again, you know, that's just some, some uh, interjection on my part. Um, I do know that the um, unstriped parking is a recipe for disaster. People don't know how to park in an unparked, unstriped lot. They'll take up 25 feet if they have to. They don't want to get their little Lexuses dented mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. So just the, the striping alone has been probably increased in efficiency. Yeah. I can tell you that right out of the gate. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's just, I mean... Mr. I know, Chelsea, it, have you had a problem in the last six months since they've expanded some of the parking? Or is it no, still I honestly a problem? haven't, no. Okay. His tournaments, I mean, I saw the intensity, honestly. His his peak was my valley. So I actually did uh, accommodate him with some some uh, overflow parking in my facility, oh, okay. and it didn't affect me. Okay. Um, you know, my busy season starts, you know, whether the snow melts yeah. until whatever. So, uh, you know, he's doing his tournaments in February, March, and April, or not Fe in April, but in February, but March. Ones, yeah. It doesn't affect me at all, honestly. Okay. Uh, it was a nuisance way before the police got involved with the parking in the street, mm -hmm. and now with the no parking on Oak Street, it's alleviated that issue. Okay. Um, once in a while, you get some, some clown out there that still wants to push the buttons and park there, and I hope they get towed. Yeah, we call, then we pass up to yeah, we call. We I think a number. detail would be a phenomenal thing. I don't know about a, you know, an ATO kid with a flag out there, maybe a police officer. I do know that when the, before the parking issue was, uh, when the parking was initially instituted with a no parking ban on Oak Street, there was a police officer out there telling people you can't park there. And, you know, for the small amount of money it would take to have that detail officer there during those peak periods, even directing people to turn left. Um, out of his facility to go down, you're crossing traffic. That alone would, would be a would be a you know, I mean, turning right out of his parking lot. That's easy. Yeah. Turning left, you're going to get people coming down. It's a cut off anyway. It's a it's a speed trap. That's going to be the bottleneck right there. So, yeah. you know, on larger terms, you do get police details, yeah. and if they're Pembroke officers, it goes smooth as anything. What happens though, you get the sheriffs in there sometimes, and it's just a cluster. You literally gotta say, just don't stop stopping the people out on the street. Because every one car will pull up and they'll stop everybody here. The Pembroke guys, the police officers, as a cop, I know it. They know when to stop. They got two, three cars, then they'll wave them out. The sheriffs are walking out there all the time and they back it up more than anything. So, by, 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 okay. by bumping out parking on this side here, I know you're taking over your swale and now paving it, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, I don't know if non permeable overflow, grass creek, whatever you want to call it, can be employed, that can be used as. Uh, that one or two or three times a year when you do need that, that's a possibility for the engineer to discuss with you. Yeah, I don't know, you can ask Peter. I was calling him constantly saying, can we get more spots in? And when he explained it to me, I go, it makes sense. From what he designed, I was like, okay, it makes sense to me. I think that we are, I mean, it seems, well, have you, had, since he's added the packing that, that we claimed in the front, have you guys had issues? I have not, honestly. No, I, no, I don't. I don't believe we've had any issues uh, in this past year. I mean, because I, I really don't want to be presenting a plan that there isn't enough parking. I mean, it's just. I mean, from my perspective, obviously, um, maybe we could look at doing some temp, some overflow in the back. I, how does the board feel that, about gravel parking? I, I know that the, according to zoning, and I know we've had this discussion on other projects that, well. 
it's supposed to be paved. Somewhere in the zoning bylaw it says paved. Does, does grass, grass creek, which is the, the permeable pavement, yeah. does that, does that, is that considered paving feet? You're going to grow grass through uh, it. Well, it, it, I don't know. Okay. Um, it, it probably is not. Yeah. Um, but it's not permeable. You know, it's not uh, permeable. Is this the, the water? No, the, the water goes through it. It's not permeable. No. no. So the water goes through it. For the, board, for, the, for the benefit of the board, grass tree is a proprietary name of a concrete yeah. product that looks like um, egg cottons, if you yeah. will. It's yeah. got a solid and a void, a solid void. You lay it down and you put soil on top of it and you spray grass. The grass goes through it. Unless you're looking at it from a downward point, you look at it, it looks like grass. Yeah. It's typically used for fire lanes, for emergency parking, overflow parking, a stadium three times a year. They need parking, there it is. Other than that, you mow it. Yeah, it's, it's a good solution for the rare for the rare event, not the everyday use. So I don't think everyday use. And it does use not it. increase uh, the um, surface water drainage on the body part. It goes right through whether it. So the question is whether we have that authority within our bylaws. I mean, if, the, if it's all right with the board, what I'd like to do is take a look at the zoning bylaw again and the regulations. Maybe that's an option we could come back with, and it would it would kind of um, add some spaces, but but hopefully not dramatically increase costs for one thing and or something drainage on drainage. Right. Peter, how many spaces is this again? This is uh, 166. 166. And how many spaces is it currently including the expanded? I think about 90. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the comment was made that unless the, the, the parking striped, you know, yeah, we don't it's a disaster. Well, that's actually true. Because people just park like idiots. Right. So, hey, Peter, uh, if you move that detention basin uh, 100 feet down onto the for the, for the property, it would be... Well, I can tell you, Bill, that um, I was going to address it, but this does get the flows coming off the property, both coming down here and down to this swale, below what's happening now. Oh, I'm sorry. Below what was happening before these trees were cleared. Okay. That's what we used as the existing condition, by the way, was that, that, the only, that this was paved, this was, was grassed and treated. We, we basically took an old Google map mm -hmm. before it was cleared and used whatever the cover was. I think it was part of it was grass and part of it was like brush and smaller type trees. Okay. And Peter, the reason I suggested that is you could pick up another 20 parking spaces right there, 10 on each side with a detention basin. You could move the detention basin further down. Okay, well, that, uh, in light of that, possibly, I was thinking actually if we were to do something like this, yeah, then you would just a single, move it down. Yeah. You know, 60. 64 feet wide yeah. going up the, this length and you got plenty yeah that's a um, huge cut though, now right? the other it is a big cut it's a lot of earth yeah. <laughs> so that, i mean maybe this is a better location i i didn't explore back here so mr murphy also raised the issue of drainage going from the back of the property onto his property is that something that you've looked at is that's been addressed with this okay yeah we took into consideration the overland which was coming to the ditch plus this portion which was coming down the ditch and going down, we took into, into consideration that 10-inch pipe and also the berm, which I think is, what did you say? How deep did you say? When you put that berm in, that embankment, like it's like four, three feet? Where? Down at the end of the ditch, it used to go into your drainage, your drainage. Uh, yes, I, I basically put it up to the original ground. Basically, what they, uh, well, whoever, the or whoever did, they yeah. basically dug a ditch down and put the, the spoils yeah, our, on one side and this made it well, that, our existing conditions huh? took that into account whatever that elevation is that where that dam is with it and we use the 10 inch pipe at the end of the ditch to use um not 10 inch 12 inch um, hdpe to see what was happening now and we're, we're going into that same pipe not overflowing the pipe and discharging into the swale down here you only, got a, uh, you only got two and a half feet of freeboard on that. Uh, on the one down the end? No, no, right there, right here. This one? Yeah, there's only well, between 90 and 92 and a half. No, this here. goes from 90 to 96. I know that, but it's got a it's got a relief. It has a relief on the spillway. It has a two and a half. It's on page, uh, now I can't read. What does that say? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 page. page. I'm not sure what page 10. On page 10, Peter, you got, you got, I think that says 90 of the right copy over here. 
and as I so grinding the bottom, so yeah. it starts to flow out. But if you if you can see that, so that's the, that's it's, a, it's a six inch diameter hole, and then there's two feet, two and a half feet that goes up before there's another discharge. No, I understand that, and that's my point. That's the that's but the, the elevation only of the, you have in that whole area. No, but the elevation of the hundred year storm comes up to there. Oh yeah. So no, the water is that whole depth. You I, get a little bit of flow. And a little bit more, a little bit more, then more, and then there's where your hundred year storm is. I mean, Tyler's looking looked at the calcs. I mean, I, I don't know if you have the calcs. I don't. I'd be happy to give you a copy of the calcs to help drive home the point. But I mean, we did take it in consideration. Um, that's all I can say. Okay. All right. Um, we've run out of time for tonight's um, public meeting, um, public hearing. Do we want to um, adjourn to? I'll let Peter have a chance to address some of these issues. Yes. I, at the very least, it's additional parking. Um, additional parking, some concern about making sure we took care of the drainage. And um, to address anything in Tyler's letter that we haven't yes. talked about tonight. Right. Tyler, is there anything else specifically that you think we should... I mean, he has your letter, but is there anything else you feel like we need to point out tonight? Yeah, most of it isn't too important. Other than I had concerns with that final basin, um, under the extreme storm conditions that would actually overflow that basin uh, with just that 12-inch pipe coming out and going down steep. Your calculations indicate that. Um, I'd be interested in talking to you about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, um, but other than that, we looked at that, but uh, we'll, right. cl we'll clear it up. So maybe you guys can clear up on that. Look, consider some of the comments made on parking. And what's another date we have available for this? So, um, Peter, you're not available next Monday, right? No. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's going to take us a minimum of two weeks yeah. to, to get... Um, so, I would suggest um, June 4th, since uh, May 28th is Memorial Day, I think. It's a, it's a holiday, anyway. So, June 4th, um, I guess that... Um, uh, wait a second. Do you have anything on the agenda? So, June 4th, okay, so we have the, the continued public hearing for Dominic's way at 6.45, June 4th. Um, so we could have this at um, 7.30. Maybe 7.30. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we have a motion to So adjourn? I'll make a motion that we continue the public hearing um, until June 4th at 7.30 p.m. And that's a public hearing for proposed site plan SP3-18 located at 340 Oak Street. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. So the, this public hearing will be adjourned to June 4th at 7.30 p.m. And that'll give the engineers a chance to address some of the points that were raised tonight. Okay, thank you. Right, thank you, guys, for coming. Thank you, everybody. It's great seeing you, son. How are you, Tom? Yeah, nice to see you. Oh, well, well, buddy. Well, see you young sir. Well, 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 I don't know. We have to do that. Hello, man. You're very efficient. Don't forget to do that. Good to do that. So I don't grab it. I got. I got another. I got to be back here at eight thirty. You do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 Emily Lane. Uh, huh? Stay here. No, no. Eight forty-five. Eight forty-five. Yeah. All right, so now we have to open our public hearing for proposed definitive subdivision number 1802 located at 45 Taylor Street entitled Libby's Lane to consist of five new single-family houses, one existing single-family house, and a new cul-de-sac row. Um, if we look at our packages, we do have a letter dated April 24th from Maryland. <laughs> that we can um, take a look at. Yeah, it. it's, it's good to see you. Nice How you to doing? Good. Good. How is Bob doing? Oh, with the engineering like plan for correct. For uh, Libby's Lane. What's the question? Right. Who does the best bank inspection? What's that? Because you're showing all this. Now my kids are all blown out. Is that the sign? Oh, are they coming in? They visit. They come over. Then your son doesn't think they're going to follow us. All right. Yeah, usually it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Are you back in the search? Did you guys get a chance to sign in with yeah. the yeah. map? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. See you. Yeah. One of you can go sign in and let them know who's here so that we can. All right. So thank you. Have it for the record. Have it for the record. We have a new member tonight. It's a Saturday. I didn't realize that.
brand new member. We're still down a member. Which we need to talk about in a few minutes. I should move over to chair here, so not block. Oh, not, not part of this, I'm just some of us. I like chicken. I like <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. yeah, like just, just want to know what's going on. Okay. Now we'll be set. It doesn't. You might want to sit over this way so you can see the board. Um, and if everybody would just um, sign in with Matthew. He has a sheet going around. Yep. Um, we did. I think somebody's actually sitting in that seat. Just move over just one. So I can Thank you. Oh, you're fine there. Yep. You just got up to sign in. Okay, so now that we've opened the public hearing on this uh, proposed defendant subdivision, we'll start with the applicant's engineer giving us an overview of the plan and where we are. Then the planning board will have a chance to ask some questions, and then we will ask anybody here from the public to let us know what your thoughts and concerns might be. Okay? And just if I could ask, we have people, is to try to direct your questions through the chair. It makes things go a little more smoothly. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick Grady from Grady Consulting, along with the applicant, Bob Goslin. Uh, some of you may remember Bob from about eight years ago. We were before you for the Calliopath subdivision that, that he also developed. Uh, this is a proposed sub subdivision uh, located at 45 uh, Taylor Street. Uh, what he is proposing here is to retain the existing house on a lot in the frontier and construct five new houses uh, towards the rear of the property. It's adjacent to another subdivision uh, the planning board had approved not too long ago that's currently un under construction, uh, just adjacent to this project, and we're, we're somewhat of a mirror image of that uh, project. Uh, we do have some wetlands on the property. We have some border and vegetated wetlands to the rear of the property. Uh, we have a riverfront area for the Pudding Brook uh, located in this area here. Uh, we've got some bordering vegetated wetlands just off the property in this area. And we have an intermittent stream, small little handheld hand dug drainage ditch uh, in this area here. We have submitted to the Conservation Commission. We had one meeting with them so far. Uh, they hired a consultant to review uh, the wetland delineation. Uh, and we go back to see them, I believe, June 4th or so to hopefully wrap things up with them at that point. The proposed roadway, uh, starting off Taylor Street in this area here, a uh, fairly gentle curve coming into a cul-de-sac. Uh, it's approximately 650 feet from Taylor Street to the end of the cul-de-sac. Uh, you can see from the uh, profile of the roadway here, uh, gently slopes off of Taylor Street. We have a negative 1% grade coming off of Taylor Street, uh, a low point at approximately station 2 plus 0. Uh, right in this area here to collect runoff uh, from the roadway. <coughs> uh, then we come into a little bit of a high area and then a low area at the end of the cul-de-sac um, the catch basin in this area here. Uh, so we'll be collecting the drainage through a series of catch basins, two catch basins here, uh, as well as a catch basin uh, at the end of the cul-de-sac, uh, which will be routed to a drain manhole, a storm scepter, uh, and drainage basin uh, between lots four and five in this area here. Uh, the grading for that basin and grading for the roadways depicted here. Uh, we do have a little bit of a cut in the area about four to five hundred feet into the road into the subdivision, um, but no real significant uh, cuts or fills. Uh, we did provide a cut and fill plan to the planning board as part of the application. Uh, the grading for the detention basin actually very similar again to the uh, one that was done next door. Uh, there is, we are getting some infiltration within that basin and there is an overflow to the rear in this area here. Uh, we've submitted drainage calcs for the two, 10, 25, 100 year storm events uh, to demonstrate that there's no increase in runoff for the post uh, development condition. We did provide schematic house uh, layouts demonstrate that the lots uh, can be 
built upon. Um, we are requesting one waiver for the subdivision. We are requesting to uh, go from two sidewalks to a sidewalk on a single side. Uh, we understand that the board would likely be requiring some sort of a uh, payment in lieu of uh, construction of that sidewalk. Uh, that is the only waiver that we're requesting. Uh, we'll be connecting to town water. We'll have individual septic systems on each of the lots. Um, we do have a letter from Peter Palmieri that we've uh, reviewed and we've begun <coughs> making some revisions to the plan. Um, I think everything in the letter is pretty straightforward and we really don't have a problem with any of the items that he has requested. Um, so with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Um, so the existing dwelling, when we say it's 19.8 feet from the front lot line, you know, you yes. mean off of Taylor Street? Yes. Okay. Not off of the new street? No. Okay. So there's no movement from an existing road? Okay. That's, That's right. right. So we meet the required front setback to the new subdivision roadway and the existing setback to Taylor Street remains the same. Anybody have any questions or comments based on what we've seen so Now we have two Dans on the board. That's going to make, it's going to be Smith and Taylor. <laughs> so one thing maybe you can, I guess, clarify. Um, so this, what you're proposing right now is five new houses and the existing house is also part of the subdivision? Is that, I just want to make sure I actually understood it correctly. So, yes, the existing home is part Sorry. of the subdivision. Um, however, um, he did get a buyer on it recently, so we do anticipate submitting an A&R plan to um, ask the board to endorse that next upcoming meeting. Should does have it that have enough couple of days. frontage on Taylor Street? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Um, and they don't care that they're not going to be part of the subdivision in terms of making sure that you guys finish that road correctly and everything? Um, that might be a better question for Bob, but it won't be part of their property. We will we'll retain a grading easement along the edge of that property in case we need to do any grading there, but there's really... And their good. driveway is going to stay off of Taylor Street? <coughs> Correct. Correct. Okay. So they're not going to be dependent on that street for anything? No. Okay. And I've already showed them the planting, so they're going in on that side. On the side of their house? Yeah. Okay. Um, Peter, is there anything in particular that you think from your letter that we should talk about tonight, or is it just something that you guys will go back and forth on? No, I think most of the comments are pretty straightforward. Um, a number of, um, of planned content issues, but um, pretty straightforward, so I don't have any concerns. Okay. Rick, did you have a chance to issue to, to review Peter's letter? I did, yes. I, I don't have any problem with any of the comments that he has, <coughs> and we'll address them to his satisfaction. Okay. And um, so now, if nobody has questions, we'll ask folks from the public who came today who might have what, comments um, they want us to consider. What's the purpose of this meeting? Could you Oh, Mike Tyler uh, on a butter. And give your address, please, for the record? 31 Taylor Street. Okay. I'm sorry, what's the purpose what's of the What's the purpose meeting? of this meeting? So, the planning board is the body that's elected by the town to enforce the rules and regulations of the town for building new subdivisions. So our bylaws and our planning control rules um, set forth, you know, anybody who owns property in town has a right to build according to the bylaws. I see. And this is a residential zone, so they couldn't build, for instance, if someone came in requesting to build a commercial warehouse here, we would say that's not within the zoning bylaws, you have to go to ZBA and see if they'll give you a variance, which I hope they won't. Um, so when they come in with a residential plan that fits the zoning bylaws, there are requirements as to the size of each lot. There's requirements as to the amount of street frontage for each lot. There's some, um, so, the, so the zoning bylaws have some basic requirements that we really can't vary from. If, we, if, there's a, if the applicant wants to vary from some of those bylaws that have been passed at town meeting, 
we don't have the authority to do that. That would have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance, um, and but they haven't requested any variances. So they've constructed, they've taken the land, and it appears from my first review of this that they've come up. So this is a, a public hearing for us to hear from um, from the applicant, from the abutters, from any member of the public who's interested as to whether there are objections that we should take into account. We have limited authority, right? We can enforce the bylaws. We have our own subdivision rules and regulations which go beyond the bylaws, but because we make those rules, um, we also have some ability to vary those rules if it makes sense in a specific case. So we might have some rules that are, you know, thought to be the best um, best practices, but there may be some specific cases where we have a little bit of play with those rules. And those are the waivers. And that's a waiver. So if there's a waiver requested, like he requested a waiver to only put sidewalks on one side of the street, that's not a bylaw requirement, that's a planning board requirement. And since we're imposing the requirement, we can waive the requirement. Typically, we will. We have a practice of waiving the requirements so long as the developer is willing to put the amount of money it would take to construct the other sidewalk into a town fund to work on sidewalks in other parts of town where they might be more useful. Because having sidewalks on either side in the subdivision is sort of a best practice, but not necessarily a necessity. They're the people marketing their own subdivision. If they don't think they need sidewalks on both sides, we're less wedded to that so long as then the town increases the amount of sidewalks in town by getting the funds available to help us with another project on another street. Um, so that's sort of the difference between the bylaws that we're trying to implement and the rules and regs. Our board tries to be a little bit more um, rule bound as much as we can be, that we're looking at it, we're trying to look at it as objectively as we can and say, okay, what are the rules? What are we allowed to say? What are we not allowed to say? What are our findings? Um, and do we approve the project or not? And then we issue our opinion after a, a series, usually a couple of public hearings. And we have our own town engineer who provides us comments to their engineer. And the applicant pays for our town engineer to review those um, plans. So the applicant who wants to come in with a plan to build a new subdivision has to give us the funds to pay for the town to have someone who's looking out for the interest of the town and enforcing our rules and regulations fairly and evenly. And um, tonight, that person who's representing the town on the engineering side is Peter Palmieri of Merrill Engineering on this project. Um, so he submits a letter to the board so that we get that input. And then the other engineer has a chance to respond to that and try to improve the plan. Um, so our goal is to first decide if the plan meets the bylaws and our rules and regulations, and if it doesn't, to decide whether we believe a waiver is in order, or if there's a bylaw that we think is violated, we'll send them back to the ZBA and say, first you have to go get a waiver or a, um, I mean a variance or a special permit or whatever is required there before you come back here for site plan or subdivision approval in this case. So once this, uh, if you approve it, does construction start? Uh, once we approve it, there's a, a there's a 20-day um, appeal, appeal period. So what happens is, once we approve it, assuming we approve it, we um, we issue conditions generally that are part of our approval. So frequently, when we approve it, we say we approve it, but with these conditions, you have to fix these things that we had a concern with. And then once we issue that decision with the conditions, that opinion gets filed with the town clerk, and then there's a 20-day period in which anybody can appeal it to um, a subdivision. They appeal directly to land court, or they appeal to the ZBA. I'm trying to remember. Court, 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 court. court. land court, mm -hmm. land court. So somebody, anybody who feels that they're injured by the project can appeal to land court if they have standing as a, as a person who's injured by the project. Does the planning board control the stripping of the land? We control it insofar as we, um, we require a landscape plan to talk about how they're going to landscape the plan after the fact. Street trees, for instance. And we control, in some ways, for example, the, um, 
when the engineer was going through the plan, he was showing us how they're going to grade the road. So that'll affect how they're going to um, move earth and, and adjust the grading to create that road. Grade. But that's also a good question for the applicants in here on, on uh, how much of the existing vegetation are you planning to maintain as part of the subdivision? So on sheet five of the subdivision set, we provided what I consider the necessary grading for the roadway. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, we have included a proposed tree line, um, which is a different tree line than we're showing on the housing schematic, because our preference is to not go in and clear cut the entire property. We'd only like to cut what's necessary for the roadway, and then each of the individual lots can determine what needs to be cut for one lot at a time. So, so that gives us a better chance of controlling the vegetation. We want to save what we can, right. um, and it's a logical way to approach it. Now, are you um, selling off lots then to other people to build? Is that the plan? We intend to build. Yeah. No, intend build, to build. build them all. Yeah. So you'll decide how you're going to carve out um, the house area based on what your customers style, want to build? Grading. Yeah. yeah. Right. But is it is it that Rick, the grading plan for the lots is what you're going to be bound to, is that correct? For the individual lots, no. Uh, because those could change. I think as far as the subdivision goes, we're certainly willing to yeah. hold the tree line that we're proposing on sheet five. Once we get to the individual lots, um, it's a little bit of a different story because we need more information. We need to know where the successful perk tests are. We need to know what the buyer wants for a house. Are they going to want a pool? Or are they going to want a shed? Um, so there has to be a little more flexibility on the lot side of it. What, what is that yellow line? The yellow line we highlighted actually for the Conservation Commission. So anything within so that's that yellow foot, line is the 100 foot buffer. buffer to conservation. And where's the tree line on the back of the property? Is it on there? Um, it is, yeah. But that little line is the tree line that's staying? Correct, yep, for the individual okay. lots, yeah. So there will be a tree line around the entire subdivision? Absolutely. Yeah, we're only going to clear what's necessary. And that helps with marketing the properties as well. Well, I have people now that have approached me about building there, but I won't commit to anybody until I can walk their lot with them and show them what and see what they want to build. And I would admit, I would probably very, I could probably very easily say there's going to be trees between the houses as well. Yeah. So we try and keep anything within a certain size. You know, pines, you can tend to, but the hardwoods will try and keep whatever we can. If you go into any of my subdivisions, you'll see that we've kept as many as we can. And Calliopath is actually a really good example of that because he had a situation there where the topography kind of said maybe we should consider a gravel removal here, yep. um, but he didn't want to do that because he didn't want to ruin the tree cover, which is a very similar approach to what he wants to take care of. Is that a stipulation in the, um, the agreement with the building? Is that, do you stipulate uh, land stripping? Only in as far as what he needs to do to get the grade in, the grading in for the subdivision for which he's uh, planning on continuing to keep a tree line around that before the um, each lot is sold. But we're giving him some leeway on each lot there. Obviously, we don't tell him what trees to take down and what not to take down because he's going to customize that for his, his potential home buyers. But we would be approving the plan as presented, which yeah. means that if he, he's preserving some amount of trees in the back of the property as a builder, and you never know what a later homeowner might do, but he's, um, but you don't know that about any of your neighbors. <laughs> um, but he's preserving the tree line, the tree line, and that becomes part of the approved plan mm -hmm. that they'd be building according to, right? If I might add to. Trust me, the people that are building new houses, they want to keep as much privacy as you've been used to. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to see it clear cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen some subdivisions do a better job and a worse job of that, quite honestly, in our town. Um, I was just talking to someone the other day, and 
there are two subdivisions that I won't name, and one of them clear cut and sort of denuded the land. And yeah, there's one on Taylor Street. They did that. Well, I'm not talking. I'm talking a different part of town. Oh, okay. Um, you know, not to call out anybody, but a different part of town. In the street, the subdivision one street over, it took a very different approach, and I think that the mm. you know it's night and day. Yeah, that's why. I'm, but I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. We're, we're not opposed to a condition that you know, kind of repeats what's already on the plan, but we're not opposed to a condition that says we'll follow the tree line for the subdivision roadway as depicted on sheet 5. Just to provide you a level of comfort that you can't go and clear cut it. Uh, this is a realistic tree line that is <coughs> depicted on sheet 5 for the roadway and the drainage. And, Okay. You could certainly write that into the condition. So is your is your approval going to be tonight? And and do you do that before it gets through conservation? So yeah. if we do, I don't know that we'll approve it tonight because there were some things he was going to address from Peter's letter that we may want to see another set of drawings on. Um, so I, I'm, I can't speak for the board. I mean, we'll find out if the board wants to approve it. But usually. You know, it may take a second public hearing. Um, if we approve something before Conservation Commission has approved it, then our approval would be subject to one of the conditions we would put in place is that the plan, as approved by us, would have to be approved by Conservation. And if there were substantive changes made, that it would have to come back to us for any of those changes. So we don't necessarily hold our decision until Conservation, but. There's no building permit issued until conservation has signed off and we've signed off. So we don't, we, you know, while we take into account the impact, the conservation impact to some extent, we don't do the detailed conservation analysis that Conservation Commission does. So we, we kind of have an expertise there that they rely on and we have an expertise here where we have engineers who are looking at a lot of drainage issues, um, we look at the landscape issues, we look at the safety issues, we want to make sure that the way it comes out onto the roadway is safe. Um, those are the kind of issues we focus on for the most part. Um, impact on the abutters, the fact that they're maintaining enough tree line to to minimize some of the impact on the abutters is something that we are grateful for and we try to make sure it happens in any site plan. Even a commercial site plan, we look at buffering between commercial sites. <coughs> but we're more sensitive to it in a residential area than in a commercial area. So I take it your concern is that they're going to be cutting a lot of property, a lot of... Well, based on uh, Tim, um, a butter, Tim right. Corcoran, 19 Taylor. Thank you. They just, excuse my language, rape the land. It, it just gone. Where? Right next to where he's building, they just—it's—it's it's all gone. <laughs> so it's just, and now they're bringing in soil. I mean, day in and day out, with trucks coming just to build it up. So it just—we don't want to see that even close to our house. I guess is what we're saying. You know, I was good. It was good to hear that he said he wasn't going to strip the land like they did, because that's just—that's oh, crazy, in my opinion, to say. And I, I did have another question about the drainage because. Uh, well, 30 yards down the road across the street, that floods. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So I was just wondering if um, you're the engineer, is it good for um, that one degree thing? Because we'll have a skating rink across his house and the neighbor's house. If it is. Where, what area are you talking about? Taylor so, Street. Taylor Street. You, you said there was a 1% slope going down. Oh, that's adequate, sure. Okay. I, would you better than adequate? Well, I mean, it, it's according to the regulations. Okay. I'm just and is, is your concern that it'll, it'll, it won't drain? Right. You're, yeah. you're afraid it'll street. drain onto Taylor Street, right? right? It, and He's coming is, into his site. He's not yeah. coming out on. Yeah, the yeah. idea is to keep all the water yeah. on that yeah. site. Okay. So, just, the, so the stormwater regulations yeah. require uh -huh. that a new developer keep their water on their property okay. and that they don't build in a way that creates more flooding on nearby streets or properties. That's that's Peter's main job for us is making sure that that's those calculations are true. Occasionally, you'll see a roadway coming into a subdivision where we're heading uphill, and then we have the concern that we are draining towards the existing street and have to put some catch basins at the entrance. This one, we're draining from Taylor Street downhill the entire way, so nothing's going to be 
the, to the um, storm drains on the road go into the retention pond? No. Oh, the proposed road or the existing road? The proposed, the proposed road, road, yes, into yeah. the detention pond, yes. So all of the water is going to be directed down the road and through the detention, um, through the drains, down to that basin between lots four and five? That's correct. And we won't be adding anything to Taylor Street. Could you describe what a catch basin looks like? Sure. If you once it's all finished, it's the two foot square grates that you see on the edge of the road in the gutter. Yeah. That, that's the that's catch it. basin, right? So it's a larger structure underneath the ground. It's about five foot in diameter, okay. typically about six feet deep. Okay. So you remove some of the sediments and everything at that point, and the water continues on to be discharged. Right. Okay. Um, I, would you just give you? I'm sorry. Yes, record? it's Susan Tyler, and I'm at 31 Taylor Thank Street. You. Um, I'm very concerned about the safety of the road, and I have been. I mean, we've been residents for. Um, 31, pushing 31 years now, um, and when they did developments across the road and up a little bit from where this is proposed, um, ever since that has happened for the entire winter, starting in November, half of uh, Taylor Street is frozen from numbers 96 to number 66 Taylor Street, are covered in ice all winter long. There is a... Um, the town does leave a, um, a big barrel there with salt um, and sand on it, but I don't know that anybody ever puts it on the street. But I have concerns now that we're putting in yet another division where people are going to be coming out at the bottom of the Taylor ice path. Um, and it's also, those driveways at the top of that street are blind driveways as well. At the top of the... the what do you call that thing? That the big rock ledge there. So I mean, that was never addressed, and all those houses were built there at one point in the time that I've been living there. Um, and then all that water runoff just goes along the street. So now we're going to have six more houses at the bottom of the hill. Was mentioned at the last hearing we had before that was even built. <clears throat> that that was on the the opposite side of the street. It is where where the water comes off the ledge and runs down the gutter. And that's that's an issue that, that these folks can't can't be concerned with because it's not and nothing that they've done that has added to it. And, I understand that. You know, I'm I'm just concerned about that much more traffic coming out onto Taylor Street. With in addition to the new six lots that are so from this subdivision, there's the house, the Geisel house that just sold, and then the new house that Mr. Gosselin just built, and then six houses are going in where they rake the land and that's all in that same spot where the road is very dangerous and very icy so I'm, I'm concerned about that um, so when you looked at the uh, site distances and the entry onto Taylor Street did you take into consideration the icy conditions that seem to be occurring on this road through no fault of your own or your client but um, right. Did you take into account those conditions when you were looking at the traffic impact? The, the short answer is no, we didn't. As far as the proposed intersection, uh, we do have adequate sight distances in both directions. Uh, and that's one of Peter's comments to add that to the plan as well. How long is it going to take you, Rick, to uh, give us answers to Peter's comments? Uh, I need about a week. So I, I guess when I say adequate sight distances in both directions, I understand that it's not this subdivision creating a more dangerous condition, but when we look at site conditions, if someone at 66 Taylor Street is going to be not able to break because of icy conditions, is there enough stopping distance between 66 Taylor Street and 45 Taylor Street to not end up with an increased risk of accident on that road? Well, I think when, when sure you go through a site do. distance calculation, you assume that the road is safely maintained, right. the main road. Um, I, I, quite honestly, I'd have to do research to see if there's even a, a, reg. a, a well, a, a methodology to take into consideration ice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's the extraordinary condition. Yeah, now, maybe, maybe if the DPW is aware of it, they can, they can um, address the accumulation of ice better. I don't know where the ice is coming from. It, it, from what Tom said, it seems like it's sheeting off some ledge. Um, that's is. a difficult condition to deal with. Well, it is, and the DPW seems to. They not don't have any money. 
they don't have any money, they don't have an ability to fix that condition yeah. on Taylor Street. So the question I have is whether or not we'll be approving plans that are going to end up with a hazard that we're not taking into account because it's the town's obligation to keep Taylor Street free of ice, but it sounds like if they're leaving a barrel there that we're not doing it. Right. So it's just going to exasperate a bigger problem. But on the other hand, you know, you know, I, I our issue is that we have regulations and somebody has a right ostensibly to develop their land in accordance with those regulations. So we're trying to balance things here and I'm just not even sure how we address a potential safety concern that's caused by the town not maintaining the road itself. Or abutting properties, not this. Right, or abutting town. properties. But I think it's the applicant's issue, though. That's it's not their well, issue. Well, because, well, the applicant's <clears throat> increasing traffic on a road where we're creating another exit point yeah. where people may <clears throat> come because well, there's not enough stopping it's distance. A five, it's a five-home subdivision. I mean, materially, it's not going to add significant traffic. Um, I think the thing to think about for this particular subdivision is where the icing occurs in relationship to what the available site distance is. Mm -hmm. It may be a non-issue. I don't know where the houses are that we're talking about. Um, you know, the site distance is a function of the speed on the road. Um, if, if the area that ices up is beyond, beyond what the necessary feet. site distance is, then it's a non-issue. Right. So I think once we have the, the distance on there, I'm, I have an idea. In my mind, it's adequate site distance. That's why I ask that the plan be revised to show the distance. Then when we take into consideration what the, the speed on the road is, uh, the posted speed plus, plus the actual traveling speed, we'll have an idea. And, and maybe it's a non-issue. Maybe it's something we need to think about. But um, I think it's a necessary piece of information we need. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was building that house on the Form A lot all winter, and where you come down around the corner, the ice is up almost in front of where the other subdivision is going, and the ice was never down in front of the house that I'm building. The, the DPW just got through repairing the two catch basins in front of 45 because it collapsed, um, but the ice never got down to that point. The ice was always up further up than the house that I'm building on the format. The water runs all the way, excuse me, um, Bill Keeler, 50 Taylor, the water, the water runs all the way down the road to, to those catch basins at the time repaired. Right. Which is right in front of 45. <clears throat> and it ices up when it's cold. Well, I didn't deal with any. So. I understand the subdividers subdivide don't have responsibilities, they're downstream basically. But at what point does someone say this is an unsafe road? We have to halt construction yeah, until it gets fixed. Well, I'm not sure you can halt construction until it gets fixed, but certainly you should be talking to the DPW about it. And I know you have, and I know the answer that you got, which is unfortunate. But I, I would continue to talk to the DPW about that because if there is a dangerous condition on that road, it should be addressed. It should be addressed by the town. What leverage do we have? I don't know. <laughs> because I mean, you, you just stated a moment ago that you know that. You didn't think five new homes were going to materially affect the traffic, but we just approved another subdivision just up the street of six, True. and then there's another one going in now. I mean, you know, wh 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 where's the limit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, the, Peter... The, the, the limit is the available land to build on, I guess. Well, could I, could I ask... I'll tell you again. I'm sorry, Susan Tyler. I'm at 31. So if that... Um, you had said that the builder would um, give money to the town for the for the waivers or whatever that they had had? For the sidewalk fund. For the sidewalk okay, fund. so could the sidewalk fund be earmarked to make a trench on Taylor Street there to take care of that? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I think it's designated yeah. funds for sidewalks. I don't think we have that ability to move okay. it over for yeah. road maintenance. I think we're lucky if, we, if it gets used for sidewalks at all. <laughs> No, I think it does get. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, haven't really? seen a lot, I haven't seen a lot of sidewalks built in Pembroke outside of this group. We have a sidewalk fund, don't we? Yeah, yeah, it goes in the fund, and then eventually DPW takes it, and I believe they use it for sidewalks. 
<laughs> what sidewalks would those be? The only t street in town that has a sidewalk on it is Water Street. I don't know how they got it. Oh, no, they just used, uh, the DPW just used money because they used uh, town money to do Habermas Street. Um, that was uh, that was town money as opposed to Route 14 is mostly state, state, state money. money. Right. But, right. but Habermas was town money. Um, so, selectmen are usually the only ones that can move money from one fund to another. Or town meeting. Town yeah, they can take money from the sidewalk fund in town meeting. But it is, if it is a significant icing issue, I mean, the DPW should be paying attention to it. Yeah, or even the Board of Selectmen. I know when people were concerned about tr trucks on Valley. That's true, too. Right? Yeah. They went right to the Selectmen. That's true, too. It, it might Have you guys sense. been to the Board of Selectmen asking for their help in this issue of icing? No, I've spoken to DPW. It, sometimes the Board of Selectmen, because they control the budget in a lot of ways, and sometimes the Board of Selectmen, if they have enough people who come to them with a problem, they can budget money for that problem. Um, and they answer to the voters, too. So. And they answer to the voters directly. So that Let's might be together. another option Let's do that. to get that road fixed. Cause, and I think that the developer probably wants to make sure that road gets you know, people are going to like to buy on a safer road than on a road that's less safe. Um, and I've noticed as well, too, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, since the truck traffic on Oak Street has been banned, mm -hmm. Taylor Street is now experiencing so much more truck traffic. And it's, I don't know if, you've, if you're familiar with the road, but it's, a very, it's yeah. one of the oldest roads in town, so it's a very narrow, winding yeah. road. It probably was a cow path. But it's a great road. shortcut from 139 over to... It's also one of our scenic ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also, I think that... Oh, so, mm -hmm. so because it's a scenic way, that also means that any changes that have to happen on the way um, that would affect... Uh, trees, trees, and, trees and rock walls. And rock walls Stone have walls. to come back for a special board. hearing before the planning board <laughs> because we're supposed to protect scenic yeah. ways differently than regular public ways. Does it make sense to go before the selectmen and request an article at the special town meeting in the fall to appropriate money to repair the road. That way the voters get them to look at it, they can decide whether yay or nay. Uh, I was very surprised that the voters at town meeting approved the article for the override, but the voters at, at the election did not. Right. But that's so much. Yeah, well, we don't have to do anyway, that's, that's, that's a different debate. But I, I do think that the um, that we have a limited ability to fix a roadway like that, right? Um, and it's not directly adjacent. You know, if there's something right in front of this, you know, we could say, okay, come out on it more smoothly. But we can't really require the applicant to fix a public road. So there, I think. You know, the Board of Selectmen could be helpful in um, in trying to get that fixed. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Are these the catch basins where the bump was that we just repaired? Does anybody know that? Yes, they have those are. So, I mean, theoretically, with this repair, it should be intercepting the water before it gets to that subdivision anyways. But, but it's ice all the way to there. Is that within their sight line or whatever? Right. So, so... What you're saying is that there's ice. This was just a big repair, a huge bump all winter. Uh, I don't know. Exactly they had steel plates on it for a while. Yeah. So this is on the uphill side, right? Yes. So the water is coming out here and running down. Correct. And that's it goes all, all the way to that basin. Yeah. It should be getting, should be done when it gets to this repair. Theoretically. So how long has the repair been active? I remember the big bump all winter, right? So it should. Yeah, it was. All done. Do you know when the repair was, was done? Was it was. It was a couple of months ago. It was. It was. It was functional right up until the time that they put a plate over it. it just. Um, it collapsed. It, it. It became a sinkhole. So after the collapse of the sinkholes, when the ice icing situation. Yeah. No, it's, it's all. It's, 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 oh. it's been ice every, all winter every year. Every year. But the, the DPW, I believe, right, mm -hmm. went and dug it all up and. Hopefully right to repair a broken pipe. Yeah. So if that's repaired. And now that water running downhill may have some place to go. Will that improve the situation on Taylor Street? No. Why not? May, may I show you a map of the street? 
Yeah. Can I do that? Or, or right there. Well, it's up higher though. Oh, okay. If I may. Okay. This is this is the property that's being built on. Okay, we're right here. So this is where the road is going to go, and and this is where the houses are going. From this point down, this is there is a ledge here that right up onto the edge of the road. Yep. Right about there, and that the water comes off the ledge. The town did try to remediate it with um, smaller pieces of like this big rock there yep. that runs right to the side, but the water just flows right off onto the street. So much so that if you don't want to go on the rock, you have to go on the opposite side of the street. And that is an uphill climb at that mm -hmm. point, and this is this is blind. That's a blind curve there. So yeah, where this house is, you're saying that that driveway out there is kind of blind, right? So, so the problem is is it in here? It's up in here, right? From here to about there, this is where this is all ice. And I'm not talking just like it's slick, because the water just keeps running and keeps refreezing. So you'll have pieces, you know, bodies of ice that are this tall, you know, for extended periods. And the catch basins are right here. Yes. Sort of almost past the point where the greatest problem is. So right. just okay. to confirm, you, you said the worst area is 96 to 66. Yes. Okay. So the question then for, for for this hearing is whether or not this road to 66 is enough stopping distance considering the fact that they may not be able to start stopping until the exactly. ice yeah. eases up. Yeah. That ice can, that water can come all the way down to those basins at 45. It gets a little bit better down toward 45 because the sun hits it in the winter time, but up, up where she's talking about, the sun never touches it all winter long. Okay. And that's why it's so bad. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, so we'll, we'll, Take that into consideration, but I also would say that trying to get trying to get some um, vocal um, uh, hearings before the board of selectmen may also help with getting some money designated because that's going to take some work to fix that problem. And I think the DPW feels like they don't have money, so going to them, they just look at you and say we don't have money. But if you go to the board of selectmen, you might have a better chance getting an address. Um, and we'll take into consideration as best we can whether we need to improve any of the site distances given the fact that you have an unusual road condition coming into your site. We'll, we'll defer on saying that we don't think we have an unusual road condition, that we do have an accepted town public way. We will look at the issue though. Okay. Fair enough. So we are out of time for tonight. I take it we are not ready to issue a decision, oh. unless someone else is? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, uh, what do we have on June? Are you gonna, you're going to be before the, cons the Conservation Commission on June 4th, correct? I believe that's the date. So we, we just set a hearing at 7.30 on June 4th for Oak Street. Yeah, we can do another hearing. So you want to do 8.15? Yeah. Well, if you have so, a hearing with conservation, what time is your con yeah. con con meeting? I'd have to check it. I think it's uh, at least 10. 7, oh, oh, 7 10. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you should be done by 8.15. So you can come over here. Mm -hmm. It'll be efficient because you won't have to come to town hall once. And we can... Um, <laughs> well, so that, I mean, that works fine. The only thing to be aware of is we already have two, two public hearings on June 4th. Um, uh, personally, I don't have any objections to doing three, but that is a lot of. Uh, we may stay. We may want to stay. What's the, the What's the other one? So the the continued for Dominic's way is at six forty five. Oh. Okay. Um, six forty five Dominic's. And then seven thirty is is Wolf's Den. Okay. And eight fifteen. I think as long as we keep the agenda fairly free, other than those three, we should be okay. Yeah, I mean, that's that may be tough just because inevitably some things will come up. Um, but I'll try to keep this free. Okay. I mean, the, the following week I'm going, I'm, I'll be on vacation. Okay. And then the Monday before is tomorrow. I don't see any problem with having three public hearings in the morning. No. All right, so do we have a motion to continue this public hearing to A15 on June 4th? So moved. A second. And that's public hearing for proposed definitive subdivision number 1802 located at 45 Taylor Street and entitled Libby's Lane. So we'll have an, another open meeting on June 4th at 8.15. Well, all of our meetings are open meetings. We'll have another public hearing, which is a more specific type of meeting. Maybe we should all in favor of public. 8.15 on June 4th. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
I do forget to do that sometimes. Quick question for you. Is June 4th your next meeting? And the reason I ask is, okay, we're submitting the A&R for the house lot, so I'm just, just curious about timing on that. Oh, we'll have that well, here wait, for that meeting. Wait, no, no wait. we're meeting, um, we're meeting next, next week. Yeah. We have a meeting next Monday if it's just an A&R. Okay. We might be able to fit that next Monday. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. definitely. All right, we'll get it over in the next day or so. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe then that maybe after the NR, then I don't know if you adjust the plan then to reflect that. Anyway. Well, the ironic thing is that we were going to divide the house lot based on the definitive because this is different than the original ANR. Now we want to re make the ANR to look like this. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so an ANR is an approval not required plan. Because they have sufficient frontage on a public way, we actually do not have the authority, if it meets those frontage requirements and the rest of our subdivision requirements, we don't really have the authority. It says our the approval of the planning board is not required because it meets all of the bylaws of the town. And so that's not a public hearing because they're really, I mean, it's a public meeting, but it's not a public hearing because as long as we certify that it meets certain requirements, we really don't have any uh, discretion. So at the A and R, you're not going to approve the rest of the subdivision that will take place in the fourth. Correct. Right. Our, our yeah. hearing to consider any changes to the subdivision will be on the fourth. Okay. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for your uh, head. Well, no, this side. Every now and then we'll get the big meeting. Thank you, but not very much. Hey, I got it. So we yeah, have we'll turn that over. Lori Muncy and her Lisa Sullivan of the Old Colony Planning Council about possible projects for which to use the district local test and call assistance grant funding. But I don't think they're coming. Just stay here. That one's mine. Um, that's quite easy to be here if you want, but that's quite easy. Uh, I thought Matt told me they weren't coming. All right. Thanks. Matthew, are they coming today? Yeah. So I think. Or should we start a routine matters first? So they, uh, actually, we, we're moving them back. They they contacted me, or we contacted each other. Um, and uh, they're pushing it back to July, because they were, I was telling any of us this morning, because they're working on the thing. So I guess, basically, they're not coming. Right. Oh, yeah, they're not coming. So they're not coming. Yeah, they're not coming tonight. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so I had a, um, I actually talked with, uh, I think, Bob Phoenix is his name. Oh, here he is, right here. Uh, and he's, he, I originally had him down for 845, but since it's not like a, a time certain, I assume he could, we could do him earlier. Um, let's, finish this, let's finish this sucker up. And Wait, so, I'm sorry, what are we yeah. finishing up? This is just for 262 at the Oak Street, just to sign the building permit. Recycling I believe, number SP2-17. Do we have, did we approve conditions on that one already? Oh yeah, that was approved a while ago. I have ago. no idea what we're talking the about right The decision and condition. Is that's the the two how do I, it's like the two buildings um that brian murphy brought us um sort of near russell fields property over there on oak street yeah. i mean i'm sorry on corporate front and drive did uh, we ever get the front part cleared up on that wasn't the front part supposed to be cleared up before there was building on that that's phase two i think no no it, we had asked is it for part of the to conditions be, it was part of oh the, that's true yeah yeah the they have to build the, yeah i've got them yeah i mean they haven't put the sidewalk yeah can we put the conditions for that madam chairman are you all set um my attendance <laughs> I don't know. Do you have anything else before us tonight? Peter? I don't know. <laughs> um, this uh, we have a building permit for a lot on Emily Lane and a discussion about Stone Meadow Farm Definitive Subdivision. And that's yeah. That's Tyler Nunes's thing. That's Tyler Nunes. Okay. Right. okay then yeah, I think you're good to go. Great. Thank you, Peter. Good night. Thank you. Give the conditions for the yeah, yeah. See ya. meeting. Yes. Yeah, so. You have some minutes that you guys can be taking a look at oh. in your packets for the 13th, the 23rd, and the 30th of April. And we're right. going to be trying to have people who attended those meetings let us know if they have any concerns. And then we will have to kind of try to vote as a board because we probably don't have 
We may or may not have a form of people who attend it. I think we do actually. Yeah, we, we do. do want to, and I can pull the drawings for that too. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they had, they were supposed to do the, the sidewalk along. Can we do two street? things at once? Can I make motions to approve minutes at the same time? I can wait. I'll hold. <laughs> so, can, do we have the, the site plan um, as revised on June 13th? Because I, I thought in specifically that we were going to have the um, yeah, I think it's just a question of at what time was the condition that they should build the sidewalk and some others? I thought we had discussed, if we went back, and I thought we had specifically discussed having the sidewalks, landscaping, and fencing done according to this plan in phase one, so that it would be a clean look that we were trying to remedy on the site. Is this property referenced in the lawsuit? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is Russell, between Russell Field and I don't think that Mr. This Field has sued them for anything regarding their thing. Well, well we're being sued. We're being sued for the neighboring property, but the neighbor, not, it's a neighbor, not this not one. this one. But by the applicant. We're being sued by the applicant on a different matter, but not on this matter. So this is um, so this is Yeah, in phase one, we were supposed to fill and regrade the area with clean borrow material seed and regraded area <coughs> in phase one. And I thought we specifically. And I also to put a sidewalk and yeah, and I thought we were supposed to get the sidewalk in phase one so that this ended up being clean with a fence before we ended up. And then it would just be a clean slate before we ended up. Um, you know, providing everything that's wanted here, the idea was, okay, but we want this to be cleaned up because that was what was in violation to begin with. Right. Because this had been cleared without approvals, and we said, okay, but clean it up, fill and regrade it, put in the, the fence, like clean this up as part of this phase one. Yeah. And I guess what I'd like to hear from the applicant is the timing on that. I mean, I'm sorry. We had that here under condition one. So they're all conditions. So what is the time well, of that? Well, that's condition, so under when, condition one. When, when you guys were in here to get this plan approved, it was after this area in front had been kind of made a mess, right on Oak Street. And we made a specific condition that if we were going to grant this, that that area be cleaned up as part of phase one. And I haven't seen that that's been completed. Well, um, I'm, this is my first time coming in front of the board in years. Yep. And I'll tell you from what my perspective is. Yep. And I know, and I'll go back four years, mm -hmm. probably, and maybe even longer than that, I initially came into the planning board and asked if I could cut the trees on the property to encourage the development of the site. I did not do that because of the economy. I had a 35% vacancy at Corporate Park at that particular time. Mm -hmm. But I also owned this particular piece of property, and I, mm -hmm. and, I, and I intended to go forward. And time passed. Mm -hmm. And then my son came in and a couple of years later after that and made a request to cut the trees down again. And I think you it wasn't, asked it to wasn't until in a it wasn't part. until the trees were cut down that there was an issue. And and he came into the board, he came into the board indicating that he had approached the planning board regarding cutting the trees and got permission to do that. Uh, but I, I will disagree with you, sir, that I was here at the time. And the petition and the discussion that we had was with regard to some property that you have at the back of Corporate Park that he had some interest in possibly making more attractive for a hotel development. Mm -hmm. and that, or a, big, a box store or something. A box yeah, store but, or something. But, but it's still not relevant. And it still right. wasn't a site plan. But that issue is not relevant 
to the issue. Well, the, the point is, the point is, it was clean. It was after the uh, approval was granted. The whole place was stumped and removed. All the stumps were removed. The material was brought up. Uh, was um, the site was graded to accept a berm around the edge, and the rough uh, area with the sidewalk is is graded to uh, to go in. And uh, uh, it is a phenomenal burden to put on two little buildings to go going up on the back, two little buildings to go up on the back to require all of the improvements that would requ be required for the entire site. So do you want to reopen our site plan review because that was that, the it, condition it that was in here? Yeah, it, it it was to be completed. I don't believe it was to be completed. Never it's completed first. It's completed uh, certainly before the uh, all the buildings would be put up, but. Uh, there's got to be some reason associated. There's a ton of money to go into putting sidewalks and to put uh, put uh, landscaping and a fence. To we put were all told those that that in. would be done in phase one when we but approved uh, this plan. Yes, but uh, uh, I understand that. But I thought you were, t you were s I think uh, Mr. Uh, Fettis is in here this today for regarding signing off on a building permit. I mean, we can't have all this work done prior to getting a building permit. <laughs> we can't get the financing or anything for this. But we're here to remind you that the uh, work that was agreed to here was part of phase one, which is the two buildings that you're getting the building permit for. So we're asking that you take that in consideration as we agree to sign the permit. Well, actually, I think well, we, have, uh, we, we, have to, we have to take it in consideration because if it's... If it's if no, that, no, I mean... That, no, no. You understand that if the sidewalk is not done, and the fence is not done, and the grading and receiving is not done, you will not get an occupancy permit for those buildings. Would you like the entire, would you like us to just to pack up and do nothing down there? It is very, very difficult Look, for, we, on the burdens that you have on us. We spent hours with this site plan review, and that was the promise that was made to this board, and that's a condition of our decision. So if you do not want to adhere to that condition, then you need to come in with a new site plan review and a new public. No, I don't hearing. have any. I don't have any problem adhering to it. There are some of the some of the items that are on there, which you've just mentioned here now. I don't think. And I guess my son had agreed to that. I, I don't have a problem with that. But you want, you've got to understand. I, I need that. I, uh, I I certainly would not be able to do that prior to getting a building permit. We already got a no, foundation. No, we're, not, we're not asking you to do that. I want you to be absolutely we're, clear, we're, though, that those will be required before you get an occupancy permit. Uh, I understand. The fence is a, is a, is a big item, but I, I'm... Uh, the I, fence I, and the sidewalk and the grading. I mean, quite honestly, I go by that site, and I still don't think it's made to look that nice. Um, but uh, again, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a site in the process of development. Uh, I mean, uh, right, but what your son had promised us is that in part of developing it, he would make it look nice in the meantime. And always, he, all my sites always look nice. Corporate Park is the this best site does not always look nice, sir. <laughs> well, I, it has always looked nice. The only, only reason it was a it was a disaster area was because somebody stopped us in the middle of of uh, of construction. It was a, it was a, the trees were cut down at that particular point, and it looked terrible. But uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't because we wished to leave it that way. We were in the process of. Of uh, developing it, which we thought we had permission to do. And so, what is your time frame in terms of building the buildings and finishing the site work to make this property um, adhere to this site plan? Well, it's going to take us probably another three to four months to build the buildings. Okay. Okay. And uh, I had hoped to get the sidewalk done in the. Uh, I thought they were just one thing. Sidewalk down on the trees installed. So we're just going to come in and go on paths. Uh, I don't know. In the latter part of the summer. When are you going to be looking to get your occupancy permit, though? I don't know, Tom. I really don't. When we get the buildings complete. Uh, no, I understand. I'm saying but four months. So, that's what I'm so in that four month period. There's a lot of work to be done before I know, I get but there. You, you've got to follow the conditions that Brian agreed to. Well, my concern is that we're going to get to October and you're going to be looking for an occupancy permit, and it's going to be more difficult to finish some of this Well, I, I understand work. that, and I, I'm very conscious of what you're saying now. And I, you hear uh, me? But I, yeah. um, the burdens were very hard on that, on that site, and it was brought about principally because of an abutter uh, who, who raised hell with the board and me. And the abutter was the one that frankly caused all the problemness on the site. 
That wasn't our doing. I happen to be somebody that builds buildings and brings taxable dollars into the town. My, my abutters aren't doing that. They're, they're creating, they're creating uh, eyesores yes, for the town, that's right. all. So, I so can't do that in a vacuum. I can't build anything in a vacuum there. Well, I'm not going to get into the subject of the lawsuit, <laughs> um, but I will say that during the hearing on this specific site plan, we understand what you're saying, and we, I don't think we were unreasonable in what we asked for, for the town's protection, that there was a pre-existing condition of trees on this lot that were cleared without any regard for whether a buffer would be left up against another pre-existing condition. Those, those containers were on that property before this land was clear cut. And if you guys had come to us for a site plan next to another commercial site, we most likely would have required that some amount of buffering trees be maintained, some buffering vegetation be maintained. That didn't happen. I have to buffer my abutters I saw. My but my butter should have uh, he should have he should have he should have buffeted well, his. Well, that's that gets into <laughs> what he should do in his property is this my current subject are always of a lawsuit. Uh, my, yeah, my, my properties are always uh, uh, very attractive, and I think they're an asset to the town for thirty years. We went through a lot of work on this site plan. I'm not going to relitigate this site plan unless one of my board members wants to. No way. Um, and so, we have to, we've already had conditions set. So we have so conditions, conditions are set. set and fine. I can do nothing right. about it. Then, then, right. then can, can we sign the building permit? It's up to the board. I'm not voting for it. I'm not voting for it. I would no. have liked to have seen more work before now. Okay. So. <laughs> so we don't have a motion. So. No, you do. You have three members. Well, Mr. Well, no one's made a motion. No. Mr. Smith gets his, his first shot at this year. I wasn't here for the meeting. Actually, you can't vote. Right. You, you can't vote for a building permit? I don't know, Ken. I don't, I don't think so. No, no. It's been sorted. It was pre existing. And, and we need. He hasn't been through any of the hearings or anything. Right. How can he make a well, motion? Well, no, it's not for approval, but it's not for approval. It's for a building permit. It's for a building permit. I guess you can, but it might be appropriate to abstain with it. Talk about putting me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 frankly, I'm just concerned that I'm not hearing that there's a real effort to finish up the work that we're talking about, and that the goal seems to be to finish up the buildings rather than the work the town had asked for along the edge of Oak Street. Forget about your neighbor's eyesore. I'm talking about the grading and the finish of the work along Oak Street, and that has not, that hasn't been done. It hasn't changed. Uh, and I, and I, what I'm hearing tonight is you're not very happy with the conditions, and I... There's a lot of money involved in the conditions, ma'am, and that building has to go up in order to receive the money. But and that's not our that. problem. I'm not, my, my job is to get, a, my job is to get, at least my understanding of it is to have this done prior to an occupancy permit. And if that's the case, then it will be taken care of. Right. I mean, we have just approved another site plan on another one of your properties for a tremendous um, project. Uh, project. So it's not that we what have not that? approved Sorry? other projects. 15 Corporate Court Drive. I know that. We work very hard on that. Yeah. yeah. And we've been very supportive. We actually changed the town bylaws in, in consultation with your son to make it easier to market these properties in a way that would bring the best development to the town of Pembroke. Well, that's what we're trying to do, ma'am. And we've I mean, been doing that. Right. Well, we, we're, the, we're the ones that uh, are out there every every day. Right. That's all. We, just, we had a tough winter to work with, but certainly this was graded. I think what we'd like to hear is a stronger commitment to comply with the conditions for this particular project before you get an occupancy permit. Also, I think the issue is, I mean, just from my experience internal to town hall, um, I mean, we may not have, you know, necessarily all the power we'd like to to, um, to prevent the Knox from, from being issued. Um, I, I still don't understand the time frame for getting the finished work along Oak Street done as part of this building process. I don't understand. It sounds like you're not even going to build the sidewalk and do the... It's already upgraded me. And so are you going to do it this summer? I just told you. I said it'd be four months 
every four months to build the building. Are you expected to be taken care of? Uh, if it's according to the permit, and the permit requires it to be done, it'll be done. Okay, so you're so you're happy to comply with the conditions. Well, I'm, not, I'm certainly <laughs> would wouldn't be very smart on my part to come in here and say I'm not going to comply with the conditions. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. It sounded like that to us. They want huh? to <laughs> it sounded a bit uh, like that to us. So I'll make a motion that we approve the building permit for what's the number here? Uh, it's for two sixty two eighty. We 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 uh, will have the clerk sign the building permit for two sixty two eighty Oak Street. A previously appro approved site plan number SP2-17. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I vote? Um, I believe you can because it's the it's directing the clerk and if we had lost half of our board we would still need to direct the clerk so I believe you can. I would say aye. Okay. All those opposed? Aye. Uh, abstaining? I'm abstaining. I do, do want to see this done. Agreement? I'm sorry? Do you, have, do you have the form? Yes. Yes. I, don't, I didn't come in for that purpose. Yes, well, that's, that's, I, um, I have total I mean, that's only three in favor, so you can't. <laughs> we can, we can sign a building permit with three in favor. Is that true? Yes. Sure. It's a majority. It's a majority of those present, I think. Right. That was a majority of the board. Is it? Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody no. wants to challenge us, they can. People like to sue us like that. <laughs> I don't think anybody would. In this case, at least, no. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I really do want to see oh, that type of work done before everything else What's that? is done. Yeah. Well, no, you just call it. Board question? Mm -hmm. uh, my reason for, and I don't even know it's my turn. Is it my turn? 8.45? I come in on another issue. Uh, there's a considerable amount of work that has to be done for the hospital, the excavation of a lot of material. I, I would like to commence on this particular site here the grading of the site to accommodate the uh, Future building officer. What are you talking about? On which site? On the hospital site or on this site? On this site. There's, a, there's a, quite a bit of material that's got to be removed from the hospital site. It's part of the uh, it's part of the sale of the property. Yeah. <coughs> and I'd like to place it, and I'd like to do it uh, with the permission of the planning board. And not, I don't even know what I need the permission, but I'd like to do it with it. I'd like to bring that's the site, a few minutes ago, up to grade, and uh, and basically it's the, the larger portion of the site, and uh, I think it'd be much easier to market it as a level site. It's not that way at the moment. There's a berm across the around the perimeter of it, yeah. and uh, I'd just like to know if I. Uh, Are you talking about the site that we were just? talking about yes, finishing and now you're talking about finishing in accordance with the plan or differently than the plan? I think I'm doing something in addition to what the plan says. That's what I'm doing. No, I don't hear it that way. So you're going to use the fill that you take from the 15 corporate park drive that you need for that, that correct. site. You're going to clear that site and grade it. Um, it, it's pretty well cleared, and I, I, I don't know what they are. Um, but you're going to take you're going to take material from that site. That is and you, correct. And you want to move it over to the site we just discussed. <laughs> that is correct. And you want to use that to grade the site. Yes. And finish it and get it ready for building. That is correct. Is it going to? So is that? It's not going to change the sidewalk. It's not going to change the elevation from the. From the right. So I'm sort of sitting here a little in amazement that you've just balked at building a sidewalk, but you're going to use it in a way that might be I'm more not going to touch the sidewalk, disturbance. These are, uh, no, I'd like to see the sidewalk finished. Bills, so like, um, uh, well, if you're going to be doing that now, then it, you'll have a nice level site. The bill is graded out. You'll you'll plant 
I'm gonna grass there. I'm going to pick grass and trees the whole nine yards. Yeah. So, so as long as you regrade it in accordance with this plan, yeah. then you can bring, so if you're going to regrade the earth being borrowed material, so you can see them regrade the area. So if you're bringing in... This is like a four-buck bill that we got for the legal nurses for Libby's land. To comply with this plan, then you're complying with the plan. And then we can add which we're going to do until, I guess, the town manager comes in. Right? And basically we just look at the Because this sure already contemplates And you're going to do that, you're going to do that, that concurrent with the, the, uh, the building of your new building there. Yeah, all we're doing yes, is we're just saying it's okay to do it. probably occurred beforehand. Okay. The hospital wants to be going right away. Right. So you just pull it out of there. You can get material out of there and onto that site at 280. The better off you're going to be. The, qu the quicker the, the, the right. hospital site is going to go up. They want to no, start immediately, exactly. but they can't start like immediately until I get the material up. Okay. So what I would say is you just have to commit to refilling and regrading the area in accordance with site plan SP2-17. You're, you're going to build it to, to the grade shown here. Well, this What's is already done. This is already no. done. I'm going to basically fill What are you going to do? I'm going to be filling the inside. The inside. Yes, the inside. all the stumps are going to have The inside's a cut. It's 112. It's all it's really low, right? That's the, the here. This is to, to fill it for its buildable site. That's what I'm talking about. To the plan. But that's. The, this, this is a this is a burn that's right. This is a this is a sidewalk out here. I know that. Thank you. Know. Now it's got to comply with the but, site plan. It's got to comply with the site plan. But the, but the site plan is calling for a 108. So it's got to comply with that, right? And and we got a we got a 112 or 110, we got a 106. You got a little bit of fill going in there, Bill. No. This is this is a retention pond, isn't it? Well, no. it's un no, it's, a, it's just I it's think it was just supposed designed, to be temporarily. I think it was just designed to make sure that it sort of holds its own until something gets planned there. Built there, yeah. Um, I, it sounds like what you're you're starting to plan what you're going to build there, and that, you want to fill it. That is correct. And everybody come down here now. Looks at this. Looks at this. What appears to be a a, a hole. Right. Yeah. Okay. And what we want to do is degrade it yeah. so it becomes a visible site that somebody can come and say. So oh, we don't have okay. Okay. But what I don't want to see is now. Are you going to be creating a mound here? No, no, no. With it's no be, it's site not, it's plan. It's not higher than this. Okay. Okay. It's lower than that. No. That's going to go onto your neighbor's no, property or onto Oak Street. No, it's not going to go onto neighbor's property. Madam Chairman, excuse me. Bill, so you're going to have to resubmit a plan showing we proposed grades. The proposed right. grades here are 108. They're, they're existing. Oh, they're existing conditions. No, yeah. that is not existing conditions. That that's, is not. that's proposed. I mean, existing every time conditions are 106, 107, <clears throat> and you're coming to a 108. You got a 110 over here. All right. He stripped out a mountain alone, though. I, no, I know what really you did. I know, but, right, but what the I'm problem saying is that is if we're going to adjust the site plan, we understand. need to have engineering review to tell us that it's not going to go <coughs> off onto Oak Street or go onto neighbor's property or mess up your septic design. Okay, I guess that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I don't. Well, no, 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 you're building the other building. You're 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 building. you a revised plan showing the proposed grades that you intend to build for. Correct. So that we can we can see that. So we could do this as a revised site plan as opposed to a new site plan, right? Yeah. So if you came in with a page that shows the new grade, and we have Peter do a quick review of it, or whoever did a review of this, should take Peter? that much work. Then all they're looking at is the new grades and saying that's not going to cause a problem. And then we can look at it as a revised site plan. And it may be even a minor modification, depending on how big, of, how much of a grade difference you're going to have. So just have them change this 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 piece of the plan that shows those contours, and tell us how you're going to grade it, and then we can have somebody do a quick review and tell us if it's if it raises any issues we haven't considered. I'm not an engineer. How much I'm higher? I'm trying to be a wise guy, Bill, but but if you pick that up three or four feet, you're going to, you're going to have water shedding off the site. And I don't know how, how what grade you want to build it to. That was designed to be a retention basin temporary. Yeah, right. I understand that, but um, it would certainly be no higher than the grade that is out here. It's currently out. Just yeah, so that it's level. The water, has to, level. water has to go someplace. I know that. There's got to be. There's got to be some creation. So he's got to, you know, have them look at it. And, 
tell us what they think. And it's only a matter of a couple lines on a plan. It's not a big deal. Okay, so submit it to the board for... Please. As a revised site plan. All right, All right. very well. Not Thanks. as a new site plan, just as a revised site plan. Okay, right. thank, right. you. thank you. Thank you. Um, it's 8.35, it's we, Next favorite. Yeah. Lot <laughs> 3, Emily Lane, <laughs> in Stone Meadow, yeah. Definitive Subdivision. Do we have that that plan in front of us, Matthew? Yeah. Can we talk about um, getting that next question? Yeah, I've done some research on that one. Um, sorry. Oh, I, didn't know how to define, I didn't know how to define stuff. <laughs> Smooth operator. So this one's got a lot of issues, I think. Um, okay, so do we have the subdivision plan and some history of where we are? Yeah, so it was... Um, Approved. I've got some other drawings too, but uh, it was approved in um, uh, in 2005, I think, and then modified in 2006. The actual subdivision plan, and then a um, uh, a form a a oh, form a Silver was, Lake High School. It's okay. Yeah, this is the one that's sitting on the Pembroke yep. okay. Kingston border. Uh, oh, okay. So I've got drawings in small size and large size of the uh, the original one that was approved and then modified. Is this the, this the, the modified one? So that is the then the form A that was done to further subdivide uh, the subdivision, if that makes sense, um, which was signed by both this board and the Kingston Planning Board. I hate uh, yeah, and the, I agree. Um, and then they, the Kingston board voted in all these conditions here. Um, and the only reason I was able to get this was to, thanks to the help of Kathy Salmon and the assessor's office, who, who put up the rest of This can't be right because that doesn't even exist. That's chopped off. There. You can get up if you want, Dan, to see these things. Yeah. <laughs> um, Where's the and, one that has the? That he came in with, with the final. And then, I'm sorry. And then uh, he did get. So the, he you did get the, the covenant <laughs> releases for two lots, but then it's been changed. Um, it's been the changed actual changed. final dated plan that we looked at. This is 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 this this is this this is this is this is this is this this is this this is 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 this this is this how Which lot is this too? No. This isn't no. ours. And so this is uh, this is the same this is the same thing, but this is before Kingston wrote all this stuff here and before yeah. they signed it. But well, I, I believe this. I is signed it over here. Exactly. Yeah. For one lot. One lot are we are we, are we signing? This was the form I service to create these three. two. But really, it, it, it rearranged the whole. Here. It rearranged the whole thing because right the here. lot here kind of got changed as well. So this is the last lot, correct? Yeah, I guess Sir? the question is, which one are you actually asking for? Lot three, right? Yeah, it is lot three. It's at the end of the uh, contract, correct? Right? Right? Uh, yeah. I thought it had to be the. So is this one right here? So, so that's oh, no, that's, no, that's no, four B. This, this, this is why. I mean, I guess it's number three, but it's actually lot four B. Four B. Okay, so that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the conditions at Kingston. So lot four B. Um, is both in Pembroke and That's Houston, correct. and the building would be entirely in Pembroke? Yes. That's your plan? Yes. I mean, that's, yeah, the, I mean, that's, the, that's what Kingston would He required. indicates that on the notes here on the side. Oh, the, the, address <laughs> is, the address is 3 Emily Lane. I'm sorry. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but is there room to put it all in Pembroke? I mean, with a setback. Yep. As long as the bedrooms are in Pembroke, isn't that the case? No, the whole building has to be in Pembroke. <laughs> so according to, so they literally wrote on the plan? 
Yeah, it's right here. Yeah, it's yeah right that's the full size. Did Dan roll on the plane? There you go. Yeah, yeah. that's tasty. I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Mutual release and settlement agreement. No residential dwelling nor a portion of a residential dwelling shall be constructed on the section of Lot 4B that is located within the town of Kingston. The trust shall provide the board with a survey as built plan demonstrating compliance with this condition. The trust may construct a pool, a shed, or other non residential outbuildings on the section of Lot 4B that is located in Kingston, so long as those structures comply with the Mass State Building Code and the town zoning and general bylaws. The trust shall lay out and pave the way shown as Elizabeth Drive on the plan to 12 feet in width and shall also lay out and pave the turnaround located at the end of Elizabeth Drive. So this? Right. So we'll have access to the slow bottom. This will be 12 feet in width. I know there'll be a turnaround there. That way they'll have access to the uh, solar farm. Solar farm from that street. Yes. Yeah, correct. Lot 4B is this one here, correct? Yes, that's what we're talking about tonight. Yeah, yes. right. This is the subdivision. That has to do with more of the, no, that has to do with the developer. That's yeah. the hand issue. Okay, but, but, oh, but as far as, as right how are you going to fit yeah. the house? Yeah. On lot 4B, almost all right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have like a plot plan of the house, right? Okay. Without, yeah, with, with, with the proper setbacks. Um, he was, well, basically, he was, it's my, it's, he indicated to me that he would be able to do it without, uh, with the proper setbacks and um, with nothing going into Kingston. I mean, um, I, don't I don't, I can't see it. This is a fit, so. Matthew, where's your scale? <laughs> Do you have a scale, don't you, Matthew? I do, yeah. Maybe I've got two scales. One inch equals 60. So I'm saying the, lot, the house has to be all in Pembroke? Yes. It has to be all in yes. Pembroke. So it has to all be within this portion of the circle that's, that's in Pembroke. Yeah. Right. You and it still has like to meet setbacks. It's like a deck or something like that. You can't have any, you can have some type of structures all back, but it's going to find a lot of right on the line. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm, I'm looking here. It's got to be within the circle, too, right? Yeah, it's got to Well, oh, I, I don't care back. about yeah. the circle. How big of a house are we talking? Right. I mean, you know, if you... Ten by ten? We don't want to see a finished right. Is there enough room here? Yeah, I mean, usually we would see a building plan, right? A pencil, not a pen. Um, maybe. What's, what's my setback in this area? This is a. Uh, let me look at my zoning balance. Not these gentlemen, but the. Mm. 40 feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, it's kind of crazy. So in the residential. 20 feet from the sideways. From the sideways. Yeah. 11. 20 should be easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on how wide they have to make it to get any amount of. Right? Well, I don't think I have a pencil. Yeah, you want them to use it as kind of work rather than Tom trying to design yeah. it here. Well, Tom wants to get this. I don't I don't want to knock your plan up. But if you've got a 20 foot and a 20 foot setback. Yeah, there should be, you, should got, be a specific gotta, plot plan for this. Point. Yeah, there should be. They're going to have to be at some point. But you're going to have a house that's going to be 15 feet wide and 40 <laughs> feet long. <laughs> Again. Uh. It's uh, 40 feet of the way line. 40 feet. Okay. And it's it's set where a way, a setback from the way line of 42 would not be in conformance with adjacent dwellings. That would, that in which case, a lesser that. setback may be permitted, but not less than 25 feet. So I, I guess we want to see the building plan. Okay. If yeah. you guys are getting yeah. a building permit, there's a building plan. Does Ooh, everybody want to see that, or is that just me? And also, yeah. there's, oh, hey, that's right. there's an issue, too, with the... I mean, I think the lots were released... <coughs> Um, so lots were released on this, but then the whole, th this, then the small thing kind of changed this it. Was subdivided. And so I don't think, yeah, so I don't think these lots have been released in this current configuration, so that's another issue. And then I think also, looking at the minutes from when this came through, uh, I think the board well, wanted we're, we're, we're more road bonds here, as well. Right? Yeah, so I don't think we have to worry about rear yard, because the rear yard yeah, okay, can go okay, right okay, up to okay, the line. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the rear yard can do it, I guess. Yeah, the, the, as, yeah, as, it can go right up to the town line. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a setback requirement okay. from the town line. So, no, and we're 20 feet off the side, side yard, right? So we need, we need an actual lot. Yeah. 
So is that a newer rule yeah, that a house can't, can't be? You might be able to squeeze it in. Well, <laughs> you, it's no less than 25 feet, depending on what the other lights That's look that. like, right? Because we want to avoid people building their house in the front yard of the, the next door neighbor. Well, my other concern <coughs> is that I've seen things happen before backyard. where everyone thinks it's in compliance, mm -hmm. and then someone starts to build, and they suddenly get a a fight on their hands where someone says stop construction. I've even seen one case where they got building permits signed off by the building inspector, completely built the house, mm -hmm. and the court's telling them to take the building down. Isn't that bad? No, I'm talking about um, the Rockland. case in Rockland. Yeah, it was yeah, a pretty yeah, vicious fight. Yeah, that that happened there, yeah. That happened on oh, that side. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I went to yeah. leave with the court. And, yeah. That's that was, that was why we don't breathe. Was that the solar was thing or something? Yeah. Or yeah. The actual builder? Oh, in Rockland, yeah. Yeah. Oh, one of his houses there? The, yeah. The, the I, existing I, house? It's my understanding that Mr. Hanner had um, litigated it in court somehow, and he, the judgment was in his favor. He's the developer there. Um, again, that's a separate issue. That's with him. Right, uh, but yeah. I don't want us to end up in a litigation situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to hip enough of that going on right now. Yeah. I'm trying to just make sure that what we're, what we're signing off on as a building permit is yeah. actually in compliance with our plan. And okay. with the requirements well, of the Kingston Planning Board requirements? We're not holding Mr. Hanna against you. We're, yeah, I know he's not. It's just you have, you have a, frequently he, you he, he for interprets things done. differently than other uh, people. That's why I'm here, actually. That's why I sent my Yeah, building. but do you have a sketch showing the building? Uh, On that I, building I, permit application, there's nothing? Again, he, I was sent in with this, and this is what he sent me in with, and evidently he thought that you guys were aware of the situation and it was just simple as who getting a signature. Uh, I'm on here on behalf of Remco. Yeah, no, Remco is the one who okay. yeah, walked I mean, a lot from Last the time somebody was here, we were saying that we needed to pull out the plans and really look at it because we were concerned that we didn't understand how this was all working and we didn't know that we were working off of the right plan. Okay. And so that's why we, we actually brought it up for another meeting. Um, so right now, I feel like we're again in a position where we have incomplete information about... We don't know what the setbacks are. ...where the setbacks are going to be. I think, I'm oh, sorry. I think also the board needs to decide if, in terms of the covenant situation and the road bond or not, if that's an issue or not, because the covenants, the, the lots that were released on the covenant were not these lots precisely yeah, speaking. What do we have well, on the we'll road bond right now? We've got a big chunk of money on the road bond. But I think the... Looking at the, I mean, looking at the, looking at the minutes for this. I know there was a hundred. There was a bond money escrowed with the uh, town of Pembroke for one hundred eight thousand. Hundred eight, one hundred eighty. One hundred eight thousand. Again, that was with the developer. So at this time, they. It looks like Charlie did a new estimate of one hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, <laughs> you know, back when this form A was signed. Um, so I don't know if the board wants to. Enforce a, a new payment. Well, who do we go to? We want to make sure that road is finished. Exactly. Yeah. Are we going to Mr. Hatton? Yeah. He's the one who gave us the money. Oh, Let me check with the <laughs> val val balances right now. So, can you help me out here. What lots are actually built on right now? All of them. All of them. Yeah, yeah, these are just two new lots, from my understanding. So, wait, lot one is built, lot two is built, lot three is built. Is lot 4A built? Um, lot 4A is not currently built, I believe. Okay. Well, let me see which one. I'm getting confused here, so I need to look at the plan here. Lot 4B is the one that's um, that's not currently built. That's the one we're talking about tonight, right. yeah. which is 3 Emily Lane. Um, the yeah. other one is in the process of being built. I mean, it's pretty much finished. So. And did we release Lot 4A, I take it? I believe we did. Yes. No, you, strictly speaking, I don't think you did because you released one referencing I think I thought we released thing. all the lots when he came up with the road bond money. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe it's yeah. it's ambiguous. Maybe. Yeah, I think um, we released all of them. I mean, I think you released because we them held them up the until we got we got a check from them. Right. Anyway, the, the current road bond balance is one uh, one hundred seven hundred seven thousand. In our in our estimate, do we have money in the sidewalk fund too? On this one? Should be. Don't know. Yes, yeah, sidewalks on both sides here. Do you know if you have sidewalks on both sides? 
Um, there is. You have to drive by and look. They're outside. Yeah, they're. Outside. I believe they're outside. Watch. On one side, right? Yeah, and then the street trees aren't in the street. They're in the. Oh, in the right. Right. Not the road layout. That was another issue that we've had over the years. Yeah. And then there was an issue with the tree in the cul-de-sac. But he let he let the Christmas trees in the cul-de-sac die. He did. Mm. Shame on him. Because we didn't like the Christmas trees. Yeah, so when the lots were released, the ref er, when you know the covenant released for the lots, there was referencing there wasn't referencing them as shown on that form main drawing, but it seems like it's referencing the old drawings have, from two thousand six. Do we have the meeting minutes from December twenty first, twenty fifteen? Because he was supposed to come back on Monday, December twenty first, twenty fifteen, so he would like the remaining lots to be released. A new cost estimate will be done as all the balance will be in by then. And the amount will be changing. The board feels that Cleveland Select Pear Tree should be used in the cul-de-sac. Mr. Hanna stated that he would make the change to put in the pear trees in the cul-de-sac. I don't think that's been done. <laughs> so, um, so we need the. So this references the next meeting on Monday, December twenty-first, twenty fifteen. So we need those minutes in order to follow the trail here. Yeah. Are they in the file? Did you see those at all? I didn't see them, but I can look. Um, I mean, they should be in either one. Either, I mean, well, you, probably the I remember him showing up with a check. So. No, he brought money. Yeah, yeah, not, I mean, they should be in this file. $107,000. Well, my question is whether the 107 was what it had been adjusted to in December 21st, 2015, because this says that the revised cost estimate was 125700 but that Mr. Hanna would be back for the next meeting on Monday, December 21st. As a new and a new cost estimate would be done, as the balance would be in by then, and the amount should be adjusted. So the amount may have been adjusted below 125. Uh, um, who, who was the engineer on that? Was that was that uh, Tyler? Yeah. yeah I don't but Mr. Hanna did state that he would make the change to Cleveland Select Pear Trees on the cul-de-sac. I don't think those are from this file, but they're probably in the minutes file that I could read to it. I could also was it, was get like um, December the road bonds. I could look at the history of the road bonds too, I think. December 21st, 2015. That's only two and a half years ago. It was supposedly the date we were going to consider releasing all of the um, lots. There's a letter, I mean, there's like a review letter from Tyler Nimmons on December 21st. On December 21st. Mm -hmm. All right, Stone Meadow Farm. John Hannock came before the board with a new cost estimate for his road bond. Tyler Nimmons prepared a new estimate in the amount of 121000 Mr. Hannock stated that since this new estimate was prepared, more work had been done on the subdivision. He stated that more bounds had been placed and asked for a reduction in the cost of the bounds. After a lengthy discussion concerning the remaining items and the cost estimate, the board granted a reduction in the amount of the road bond to $115,000. Mr. Hanna requested release of the remaining lots for the subdivision, lots 1, 3, and 4. So we released those and then he subdivided 4, right? I think he subdivided 4 of 4. No. Just a few weeks before you released them, but I'm not sure. No. This is December 2nd, 2015, and we signed it on December 7th, 2015. Right. And this release of Lot 4 was on December 21st, 2015. December 21st, 2015. So why did we release Lot 4 if it had already been subdivided into No, I think, I think it was subdivided afterwards. No, I'm looking at the numbers right well, the here. The dates there. Dates right here. On that subdivision? Yeah. yeah. It was subdivided already? 12 7 2015, we signed an AR plan. Oh, that Kingston may have signed it there. Yeah. No, 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 we did. No, right here. 4A and 4B. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying. Member of Planning Board. Kingston signed it after us. I don't know when they signed it. So but we signed. Well, the, the lots are conforming lots, so that's not a. 
I, the issue before us now is whether we want to sign off on a building permit. Well, do we even? I mean, that's it's a release really restriction. Lot. What do we care? As long as they've got it in the circle. Would <laughs> you like to send that? <laughs> uh, yeah, think about it a little bit. Can I see the format again? The I mean, there's on? nothing that says the best. I mean, there you go. Thanks. As long as they get that house in the circle, we, <coughs> that's there. Yeah, but, there but yeah, but do we want to start an issue with the assessor's office in Kingston, and the assessor's office in Pembroke? Because we don't know where the house is. Because we don't know where the house is. <laughs> Okay, so it looks. I'm so sorry. Are we, the, are we the? So actually, this seems important. The, it looks that's like that's their thing. Right? It looks like Kingston. Well, I'm, 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 their world I'm hearing it. Yeah. Okay. It looks <laughs> like Kingston, it looks like Kingston signed this in June of 2017. So it looks like it. It looks like John Hanna waited like a year and a half. So what that means is when that's we crazy. signed the A and R in 2015, we didn't know about Kingston's. We didn't. Um, Conditions. Right. So Kingston put its conditions in place after we had already signed the ANR, and the ANR never came back to us. So as far as I'm concerned, the issue of Kingston's plans is Kingston's. Um, right, because everything we have done supersedes what we did. No, I'm saying it's kind of Kingston's enforcement problem. I see. Right. Yeah. All right. So I'll make a motion that we sign the uh, building permit. I mean, do we want to do we want to try to enforce someone no. else's nope. conditions? <laughs> no, in Pembroke, it can overlap. Well, well, we have to take a vote first. <laughs> we, we didn't, um, but what I'm saying is, we we already. This is like something that Kingston slapped on way after we were done with it. So we're, it's not really our. We we only really require. I mean, it's for the assessors to work out if a town is in both town hmm. is in both towns. Um, as to how they get taxed, and it can be a real difficult problem for the homeowner down the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and where the bedrooms is, is typically where you decide where the kids go to school. Yeah. If, if the bedrooms um, are in Kingston, the kids are going to have to go to Kingston school. Now, the only problem with that is if the bedrooms are in, Han in Pembroke, but there's valuable pieces of the house in Kingston, does Kingston get a piece of the assessment, and we get to pay for all of the public services for the house? So that would be Pembroke's interest in making sure that the house is in fact built entirely in Pembroke. It, so that if we're going to be paying for the services of the school right. and everything yeah. else to service this property. Okay, so but we can't But that's sign, really way off our... Right, we can't sign the building permit until, unless we know where the house is going to be. The house is going to be entirely in Pembroke. But how do we know but, that? But I guess I can talk with Trace soon. Make sure it happens, or at least let her know that that's the requirement. I, I guess we're reinvestigating, like we're like. I don't know. I think we'll be get, like opening something we don't have to. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's you know in the best interest of whoever's building this house to build it the way it's going to be optimal. So, I, did did you make the motion to sign the? I made a motion to sign to instruct our clerk to sign this. I'll second that. Now, planning planning is. Before I start there for some reason, why is that? Oh no, you just um, That's just. That's just. Yeah. Okay. Indicating that he wants us to do it. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You made the motion. Does somebody second? second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Opposed? <laughs> Nobody's opposed. No one's abstaining. I, I guess our feeling is that it complies with Pembroke's rules and regs, um, as long as it complies with that subdivision plan. I would caution you that you're going to have a huge mess on your hand if, in fact, it does not all end up in cover. Oh, I will, yeah, I can assure you that it will all be in cover. <laughs> and, and that it needs to have the setbacks in Pembroke. Okay, and I will so I don't know how big it will be. Yeah, he's, he's got it. He's, he's got some good engineers. Probably have to Kingston for your, for your, uh, your yeah. septic. Yeah, I... Yeah, I'm not, like, <laughs> so yeah. Again, that's just about my favorite. That's a good point. So, can, Kingston is not going to sign off in your septic unless it sees that the plan complies with that, right? right. Yeah. 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 So we're putting it back in your lap, really. Don't make no, this too much. Right, no, my lap really and and let's let the enforcement people deal with it. Right. Excuse okay. me. Excuse me. Two words. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you guys for making this for me. You guys have a good day. Good night. Thank you. So the first thing we really need to do is to get our, our minutes approved so that we don't end up in any sort of violation situation. On April 13th, uh, we have four here. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of April 13th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I wouldn't vote on that because I would you, you can vote, actually, but we, we don't need no. your view. Well, so if you want to abstain, that's I'll fine. Abstain. Yeah, you can't vote because he wasn't here. No, no, no. Let's continue with the approval of the minutes. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of Monday, April 23rd, 2018. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to abstain, Dan? I, I will abstain. Yeah. Okay. On the minutes of Monday, April 30th. I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Dan's going to abstain. Dan Smith is abstaining. That was Dan Smith in each one of those cases. Can I add? I will note that we have executive session minutes from some of those meetings, and those minutes will be held until um, we go into executive session again to consider them. Okay. Um, can I just ask a re request? Yes. Um, is, is Matt, Matt, are you sending us the minutes by email prior to approval? No, but I can if you want. Yeah, yes. I would definitely like that. Um, <clears throat> one of the things we talked about instituting was perhaps a new program where the minutes get sent via email prior to the meeting, and that way people who attended the meeting might be able to alert someone else who attended the meeting right. to raise an issue. Yeah. Well, I just um, looked up the minutes from December 21st, 2015. Yeah, because yeah. they were emailed to me. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just looked, I looked them up on my email. I thought you had a website or something. No. Yeah. They're, they're on the web, I think. Okay. I don't think that far back. So if you could uh, send those via email to all board members. Um, one, one sort of point of order is one of the issues that comes up that is still coming up is a site plan that our newest member is involved with. And I just want to see, Dan, if you want to go on the record as recusing yourself from any matters related to 346 Washington Street. From here on out or just previously? Here on out. That Recusing oh. yourself only means that you can't um, participate any deliberations with the planning board regarding that project. I think simply you just can't vote, Dan, that's all. You, you, you can well, sit out there. And you can you'll be on the other side. It, but you, you can't vote on it. Is there an issue... It, if it pertains to your your site plan, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, I can definitely. Re You'll recuse myself. yourself on anything having to do with the site plan you submitted Correct. for three forty six Washington Street. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to have that on the record yeah. for yeah. everyone to be clear on that. At we any don't... point, you guys want to throw me out? Just give me the nod, and I'll be happy to leave. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing we have on the board agenda tonight is whether we want to discuss possible reorganization of the planning board tonight or if we want to hold that for a later meeting. Why can't we do it and be done with it? Okay, just do... Um, okay, can I make the first motion? Well, wait, hold on, because there's a, I thought we had to do a whole... Really Wasn't there like a whole process? There's a process that yeah, there is language. Open yeah. 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 I think it might yeah. be easier to wait. So we'll wait. We'll put that okay. on the agenda for next week. All right. Because okay. I think we even need to, as I remember how Marilyn did it, we even we have to open it. Like we have to open nominations. Then we have to close nominations. I think right. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do we do it in the same meeting, or do we have to open nominations no. and no, then no, vote on the next same meeting? It's the same meeting. It's within the meeting. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll have that procedure and we'll have that laid out yeah, for our next meeting. Ready, yeah, okay. And by the way, I'm not advocating any change. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can we can discuss that when we do um, we agendas do then. Unless we start having our meetings. We've got to go through the process, and it's a it's a it's a I'm belabored kidding, I'm kidding. it's a belabored process. So apparently, the screening of the Habermas Solar Project. Uh, we've been told by the selectman's office that we need to get three quotes for the war work for contracts over 25000 and best practice to do so in any event. And once we get the quotes, they may be willing to contribute extra funds to help. Hmm. Should we ask Matthew to work with the selectman's office on the procurement side to go ahead and get quotes for that screening mm -hmm. and then see what we can I afford? We work with the DPW's office because they, they're, more used to, they're used to putting out those bids, bids like that. Yeah, I concur. 
Yeah, I mean, my hope is obviously I have no I have no experience or expertise in that. So my hope is that either the cyclone or DPW can actually do do that. Um, Rose and Susan down the DPW will not work with you. Yeah, I mean, I've I mean, I've discussed with Sabrina and Ed so far, so I'll have to at least confirm with them. But, but we're obviously too stupid yeah, to know to go to the select. So we'll just uh, <laughs> we'll go to DPW. Yeah, go. Well, DPW will know the people who. Yeah, they, they can get the three, and of well, course we, we want to comply with three. We three have to get three prices. Yeah. So we got and, to call three. And we will share that information with the board of selectmen. Yeah, because we're going to be asking them for money. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'll share it. With them. <laughs> yeah. But the, but the one issue too there is that we talked about whether the DPW would be willing to help us out with labor or services in any way, shape, or form. So when we're talking about putting this out to bid. The other question for the DPW well, is whether there's any way in which they can contribute or help. And before we start even talking about putting another solar field in there, I, we got to get this thing wrapped up, because yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. And, and presumably it's making a lot of money for the town, so coming up with an extra $10,000 shouldn't be a huge ordeal. Yeah. Matt, if, if, if you want to talk to... Uh, Sabrina first, and then yeah. I'll see the girls down yeah, below. Well. And if you That's want, when you want to get together, I will come in and we'll talk with them. Anyway. Yeah, that might be good because I don't have experience to no. put it together RFPs, which I'm sure you, know, you do. Now, Smith Excavating is going to put a bid in, <laughs> and uh, Construction is going to put a bid in, so we'll both recuse ourselves. No, no. no big deal. No, Just make sure we have a quorum to vote on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh, to make sure Jim is here that night. Excuse me, we, we got one member who never comes. Uh, can we have a yeah. We need to ask the Board of Selectmen about um, appointing. And from what I can read, appointing a, a member to our board in this. We need uh, the remaining no, no. members of the planning board and the board of selectmen collectively to appoint right. a member. We had talked about asking Paul Whitman <coughs> if he would come back on the board yeah. as an appointed position for one year until there's a new election to fill the seat that was vacated by Brian Van Riper's death. No. Paul's seat was vacated too. Yeah, but. Danville Paul's seat. Okay, okay, all right. Danville yeah. Paul's okay. seat. Right. And that's a five year seat. Yes. It's a five God year bless session. you. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, so did you get out of it for less? <laughs> no. no. But the appointee seat, seat will be less because How about three years you're going to go, why did I get out of this? <laughs> yeah, the appointee seat will be for a year and then the seat will open up for the remainder of the yes. term. Right. Which, that's what happened when, uh, what's the space we had? That's how I got on board. Uh, Pat Moran? No. Uh, Joe. Joe Moran. Joe Moran. Yeah. So, I mean, in this case, unfortunately, it was yeah. a. Uh, you know, yeah. and not a great reason for losing a board member, but we do have to fill that seat. Yeah. So, um, um, do we want to express our? Do, do we want someone to reach out to Paul Whitman? Do we want to reach out to the board of selectmen well, and, and to, seek I think applications? We have to go to them first. We do because I believe don't the bylaw has to be a joint appointment between the planning board and the select. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. I think. Uh, Brian's are uh, Brian. Um, Paul's already said he's interested, so I think it's basically just getting them to sign on with it. Um, Matthew. So Matthew, can you ask them the process? Ask Sabrina the process. Tell them that Paul has expressed the um, possibility Intrude. that he would mm -hmm. rejoin us for a year, which would allow us to finish up some projects that he had already been sitting on. She's familiar with it because she was here at that meeting. Yeah. And then we just need to yeah. find a way yeah. to schedule a joint meeting. Or get on their agenda so we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right away. Yeah. But maybe I don't know if you want me or one of you guys to double check with Paul that he's still willing. I mean, that was a while ago. Yeah, um, that I'll, I'll, ago. Let's get let's get the agenda set up. Yeah. Right. Let's get on the agenda. If if you if you have to get a minute, if Mary is in, talk to her. Well, no, we're going to talk to Paul directly. All right. <laughs> okay. Right, um, apparently there was an actual. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to finish up because it's nine o'clock. Okay, Asbuilt drawing for Shell Station at 223 Church Street. We got the Asbuilt drawing. The belief was that we would be returning their balance of engineering review once we got the six thousand dollars. But the question is whether we want Peter to do a review of the Asbuilt drawing, and his payment for his invoice would come out of the engineering review of course, account. That's correct. Um, 
um, in this case, there was it was previously communicated to the um, to the applicant that the money that the six thousand dollars would be returned when they provided the asphalt drawing. Um, at the time, there was a little bit of, of um, lack of understanding of that piece of the process, and so the question is whether or not we feel we need Peter's. Uh, review of the as built at this point. Well, so just to, just to clarify, so I mean, it was, I oh. suppose it was my mistake, but at the time, I was on the honest impression that once they submitted a, a correct it, as built, it, they would get the $6,000. It, it should be, should have been, should we, uh, once they submit an approved as built. So, yes. Once, well, what, well, once they we figure out if it was if, as built. If, if the as built uh, is approved, why are we reviewing it again? I mean, I mean we uh, had our engineer out there doing the whole process. Right? I just, yeah, I mean, uh, th yeah, that's what I feel. And I guess I just feel like, I mean, I maybe, maybe it was my mistake, but I think in fairness, was the the has built, the business has been up and running, maybe in this and case, it was there through the whole process. It. This is on um, Church Street by, uh, right across from Mary Lou's, where yeah. the yeah, Seasons. Yeah, it's a Shell Station. Shell's, Shell oh, Station is out in front of the Christmas tree shop. Out in front of the Christmas tree shop. So, do we feel comfortable now that we have an asphalt releasing the engineering yes, balance, yeah. or do we think yeah. that we still think need further review? I think if they made a written request, we can do it. it do they have a written request to us? Oh, yeah. That was All right. right. So, I'll make a motion that we return the, um, the balance of the engineering balance of the engineering for that project. All those in favor? No. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. Um, we have estimate for construction inspections for the uh, project at 15 Corporate Park Drive. Included a cost of an asphalt review. Can we? Um, Three hundred thirty-four forty-five. <laughs> corporate inspections, forty-two hundred oh. dollars is what Ready? Peter believes that we're going to need for corporate inspections at Fifteen Corporate Park Drive. Are we okay with uh, Matthew informing the applicant of that amount? One. Yes. Don't we? So what are we doing? And, actually, and so that does include the, his estimate of, of doing the asphalt review as well. Yes, um, but don't we? Ha how much do we have in their account right now? I have to double check. It's, I mean, probably close to zero, but I have to check. But one other thing is that I would suggest that, um, um, you know, in this situation, we like I add like a bit of a buffer yeah. to make it more, just so that we don't get in a situation where it gets so low and have to contact them again. Five thousand or six thousand. Yeah, round, round it up to six thousand. Yeah, or? something like. Okay. I think if we round well, it up to six thousand. Yeah. Sure. Oh, are we open ourselves up to a, a problem like? Allowing one to not have an asphalt review and requiring the next? Um, no, because in this case, we're sort of informing them ahead of time. Not. And our problem <laughs> in the good last one is that we didn't. We didn't. Uh, yeah. um, and so I think generally our policy is to have engineering review of the site mm -hmm. as built, and that that was just one where we, yeah. we're sort of agreeing that we didn't, we yeah. weren't as com we didn't communicate in the way that we would have liked. Um, and given the amount of engineering review we had on that one, mm. w and plus there's a lot of engineering review on a gas station anyway. Oh gosh, yeah, yeah. Because of all the other right. DEP type regulations, so. It looks nice too, so. I think we're okay yeah. with that. Okay, you sure okay. so? So, tell them we need um, 6,000? Sure. Do yeah. we need a vote on Get it up to six, whatever we've got left, get it up to six. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay. that goes, it's enough of a buffer that we won't have to worry, that we, we shouldn't have to worry about it further down the line. If, if it turns out Peter goes a bit over his estimate, which is possible. Matthew did um, go back to Sealand on 204 Center Street. He said he would clean up the debris soon. Dragon. He didn't give a deadline. Um, He'll do himself a favor by doing that. Next <laughs> Monday, there is a ZBA hearing for the appeal. Dan, you have to sort of stay Maybe. silent on this one. I, I think it's fine. Just do we want someone to go to the ZBA hearing? Next Monday no. at seven fifty p.m. for the, for the the three forty yes three forty six yeah well, I should say, um, no I okay. would stay away from it no well, because uh, of the pending yeah, litigation, litigation. okay um, we'll get do the reorganization next week then and we'll give the registry of deeds the new board signatures and new composition of the board um, so that like Dan for example. They need all of our signatures with the um, registry yeah. of deeds so yeah. that if um, someone needs to compare whether yeah, the signatures were authorized, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have a signature on file. Um, yeah. 
Brian Murphy has asked for a covenant release for 15 Corporate Park Drive because it's still part of Corporate Park Drive Extension Subdivision. We have this on the agenda for May 21st. Yeah. Are we going to have a plan for that to sign? Uh, I'll tell him to bring it. I think all he would need to bring it is, is the Is the covenant F release? Thank you. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell him to, that, um, does that involve to money? prepare that. What do you mean money? Is there, does he want money back? Is that what he's looking no, for? No, no, this no. Is just, for the, this is for the 15 corporate park drive where the new medical building is going. Because, yeah. because it's, still, it's still part of the corporate park drive extension subdivision, which is approved back. 20 years ago or something. And he needs um, to be released from the corporate yeah, subdivision 30, requirements. The, the lot still needs to be released. 35. Um, I don't know if maybe he just found that out when they're doing the titles. Yeah, um, next Monday, we're going to be voting on the Irving Oil decision, including conditions. So anybody, we do need to try to make sure that we are, all of us who have attended the Irving Oil hearings are there. Are there? Did you miss one of the hearings on that, Irving Oil? I don't believe so. Okay. I'll double check. I was, I was there uh, Matt, could you double check what the attendance was at all those public yeah, hearings so yeah. we make sure we've got a, a quorum present? Do we vote? And just let me know and I can reach out and make sure we have a quorum. Um, we're going to have the same issue with that other subdivision. Uh, the Dominic's Way, which we should be able to vote on. Can you, yes, can you also send an email that tells us who attended which hearings on Dominic's Way? Could we've had two, correct? Mm -hmm. I thought we had, do we have two? We had, I thought we had one. No, we had two. And unless you have typhoid, please make it next. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, we had, maybe we had one. Um, it felt like we had two. We had, we had, we had, no, it felt like two. two. I think we had at least two, yeah, for Dominic's Way. Okay. I thought we had one. We did have two. We yeah, had two. two because yeah. we had the one, and then they one came one. to us with the petition in the second one, remember? Okay. Should I be, like, reading up to get up to speed, or just like you guys? Well, on these, on the public hearings, you have to uh, you have to attend. You can only miss one. You can only miss one public hearing, and then you have to attest to the fact that you've read through everything right. yeah. for that public hearing. But if you've missed two public hearings, you can't. Right. You can't. Right. You can't. Okay. But I still hope that you're here, because no, we no, going no, through that process yeah. is mm -hmm. educational. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still learning, right. and I've been here three years. About it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is Irving Oil, I'm checking it right. Irving, Irving Oil and Dominic's Way. And then you're going to want to make sure for the one we just had, too, which is um, Lily's Path or whatever it is. Yeah. Because we just had a public hearing, and we're going to have another one. On June 4th. On June 4th. And oh. if the four of us are at the one on June 4th, or if... Well, actually, five Dan, five Dan, 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 oh. Dan was here. So. And Dan, so we have five now who right. could be at both. Correct. Right. Okay. So... Then if you have strep, you might be able to miss. <laughs> <laughs> for next week, it's typhoid. <laughs> it's the bar. These are only allowed sicknesses. <laughs> um, okay. Can I bring my dog? Yes. <laughs> I'll keep him on my lap. Michael's taking va uh, Matthew's taking vacation with family in Vermont July 23rd to 26th. Unless there's any objections. Matthew's attending the conference May 24th. My only objection is Vermont. <laughs> I just got back from there. I'll probably get texted. <laughs> well, what would have an objection? <laughs> and then he has vacation planned in France on June 11th. To now Matthew. that I object to. <laughs> but he has a sister there. Uh, so he has a place to stay. Uh, okay. I hope so. <laughs> and a dentist appointment this Wednesday. In case you're trying to reach him, he'll be leaving about 3 o'clock on Wednesday. Yeah. All right, so that's all of our employment issues, and I think everything else can wait until next week, Matthew. Okay. Okay, Did we, we have a green folder tonight? I didn't yeah, see one. I went through. I think you said yeah, yeah, so you have the four all signed up. You have enough? Okay. But if you want to sign, you No, can. I don't need to. I think I've got four. All right, I'll Let's make a motion go. that we adjourn the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know the board of selectmen, if it's okay, that Matthew has those employment. You know, related issues. I don't know if we're No, because nothing has been them. reorganized yet because no. they have not gone to the AG's office yet. No. Well, I just want to be sure. In case we're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, for, Ir for Irving Oil? Yeah. Uh, All right. Are we officially adjourned? Um, no. Oh, second. No, I, I made the, the motion to adjourn. I'll second. We have a motion. We have two seconds. All those in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. Okay, we're done.